Retail workers of Reddit, what's your Black Friday horror story? Not so much a horror story but something I just couldn't believe. Black Friday at Asda, British Walmart. There was these microwaves like 70% off and the store and was so busy you couldn't move. There was empty shelves all along the aisle up to these microwaves and a guy laid down on the shelf and army crawled along the shelves grabbed a microwave and army crawled back with it. If the guy didn't break the shelves doing that then he was a genius. It was technically the day after Black Friday, but it was still busy as all heck. I worked as a customer service supervisor at a computer before they closed down. Think Best Buy, and all of my checkers called in sick that morning. All of them. So I am the only freaking one ringing people up. For the first like 6 hours of the day. When I finally got a 15 minute break. I went into the back area and blew up at the first manager I could find I was so pee and stressed. He just sat there and let me vent to him. After a little while I went back to him and apologized to him. And he was cool with it all. That day sucked. Cool manager though. Worked at a store that had a service department. They couldn't ring up anything at the service counter but they had a computer which made it look like a register. Guy is standing there patiently waiting to be rung up. Finally somebody notices him and asks what he needs. I'd like to pay, he says. I'm sorry this isn't a register replies the service tech. The guy then proceeds to try and convince the service tech to let him pay because the line for the main registers is 3 hours long. Of course the service tech couldn't because he didn't have a register. He just had a computer for making appointments and such. So after 15 minutes of argument the guy moves off to find the line. Here's the fun part. While he was arguing somebody else saw him standing by something that looked like a register and so got in line behind him. Then people saw the shorter line and got in behind them. With nobody to control it the line to nowhere grew quickly. 15 minutes was all it took for the knot line to snake all the way around the department. So when the doofus who started this whole fiasco went to find the right line he found the end of the line he had started. Then the guy behind him heard that there wasn't a register so he followed the first guy. Then the next customer followed the second and so on. They walked around in a circle for an hour before somebody noticed them. We almost had a riot when a manager had to tell 100 people that they weren't in line and had just waited an hour for nothing. That same year we had several scuffles at points where the register line had forked into two lines. From then on we marked off a huge register path and had several employees just manage the line. I feel marginally bad for those people. But this story also is the best thing I've ever heard. Worked at Walmart years ago. One of my mangers thought she was being sneaky and swapped my Black Friday off shift with an on at 9am. My shifts normally didn't start until 1 and ended at 9. So this was utter balls. I was in the bakery department and had to work all of Thanksgiving the day before and they ended up needing more help. I came in at 6am that day and worked a 14 hour shift because most of my team had been given the holiday off. My managers excuse being you're young. They have families they need to be with and kids to celebrate with so I was pretty angry. I found out that the Black Friday sale was a 65 inches LCD TV in electronics and PS3s. So needless to say it was going to be a bloodbath. I stayed in my department because there was literally no one else there and caught up on much needed sanitation. When the manager found out before the sale started she came my way to rain down fire, brimstone, and bulls on me. Thankfully, I could use their own bulls policies against them. There needs to be at least one member of the bakery crew on hand to write on cakes, and since I was the only one there, they were crap out of luck. I got out of Black Friday bulls, got an easy day of work, and the perfect spot to watch the chaos all while screwing over a manager I hated. It was a beautiful day. This happened just today actually. I work at Starbucks, went to do my routine lobby and bathroom check, just to clean up during the craziness. Went into the men's restroom and there was crap smeared all over the walls, toilet seat and mirror. Really had no other choice but to clean it up with my coworker. Definitely the most disgusting crap, literally, I've ever had to do in my life. Update. While this blew up. So I talked to my manager and showed her this exact post, reading a bunch of the replies. She wasn't mad, but in a sense of all that we were willing to clean up crap. 
Even she said she would never ever do that. We went over the policy and reviewed our resources in case this happens. There gets a point where your mind is literally go, go, go from the craziness of customers and orders. The poop didn't seem to phase me at all. I'm still baffled at who wipes poop on the walls at a Starbucks. I don't think we pee off anyone that bad. The good news is that my boss said she's so thankful to have me and all that good stuff. But yes, we do have a number to contact in case someone decides to smear their fesses everywhere. In the meantime we are supposed to just lock the door and put a sign on the front. Thank you everyone for helping me out. I did not expect the load of replies. I now know not to clean up the poop. I feel stupid for doing it but I'm glad I now know. In most states, your employer legally can't require you to clean that up. Just and for your information for next time, if you live in the states. I work at the largest lingerie retailer in the country. We had a security guard last night for the beginning of Black Friday. A southern bell mother decided she didn't want to wait in a 50 person deep line and she would cut. Our security guard asked her multiple times to step to the back of the line or leave. She proceeded to ream him with every curse word in the book and ended by threatening him with a gun she had in her bag. This will be my last holiday in retail. Please tell me someone called the police on her. A customer who took a crap in one of my fitting rooms and then wiped spot with a $125 polo Ralph Lauren hurt. Nothing more needs to be said. Hum I read on reddit that people sometimes do this so they can dig it out of the trash later when they throw it out. I worked for a golf superstore as a cashier. Black Friday customers come rushing in and the line starts. I proceed to scan the first item and nothing. The registers are completely down and the lines are growing fast. The only thing we could do is take every transaction manually, write down scores, calculate tax, and use the old credit card swipers for 3 hours. I never worked retail during Black Friday again. This honestly sounds like the worst one of this thread. This year was surprisingly tame. People were all in really good moods which in turn makes me happy. Last year a woman yelled at me for taking too much time to finish a transaction. That her kids were in the car and she didn't want CPS to take them. Okay then. I worked at a grocery store in high school. Black Friday was my favorite day all year. Hardly anyone goes food shopping the day after Thanksgiving. Which is exactly why I did today. Mwahaha. Former GameStop manager. The worst one I ever worked was 2006. Everyone wanted a dang Wii. When I got to the store at 4am to prep for the 5am opening. There were people wrapped around the shopping center in a line for the dang thing even though I had a sign on the door explicitly stating that we could only guarantee them for the first 6 people. When I made the announcement to the folks in line, I thought I was about to get my butt kicked by more than a couple pea grandmas and soccer moms who had been waiting since midnight. After opening, our systems were unbearably slow when processing credit cards, but they still worked. The rest of the day was busy, but not too terrible other than the bitchy people who couldn't find the Wii. Fast forward 3 days later, a lady walks into the store with a bank statement and starts laying into me about her card being charged $200 4 times. Processing, not drafted yet BTW. She insists that she won't walk out until I give her $600 cash from the register. It ended with her and I on speakerphone with my district manager who politely told her to pee off and call her bank. Cops were very nearly called during the ensuing screaming. This is with a store packed with customers. Fun stuff. As it turned out, our credit card processor had been overwhelmed that day, and this turned out to be a wide issue. It was the explanation for the system slowdown on Black Friday. The charges dropped off after a couple days. At least the lady had a legitimate claim. She didn't handle it well, but I think anyone would be pee about being charged $800 when it's only supposed to be $200. At Staples, I watched two grown men get into a brawling fist fight over a $30 label maker. It wasn't even the last one. Someone else's experience reminded me of one I had a few years back. I worked at a toy store in the mall. Really fancy mall. And we only sold one brand of toys. Anyways, we were all about interacting with the parents and especially making the kids feel special. It was probably the best place in retail to work. Not gonna lie, if I could have had full time with benefits I'd have stayed. 
Anyhow, early December a woman comes into the store with her two children, probably age 5 and 7, no older than that. I overhear her say I'll be back, stay here and she just leaves them, not a word to us, she just vanishes. Within minutes it got busy, as in, 50 customers plus kids. There are only 3 employees in the store, 2 on register, then there's me, the shift manager, supposed to be helping people shop. There is no way I'm taking my eyes off of these kids, but there are too many people here. 5 minutes go by, then 10, then 15. I'm checking in with these little dudes to see how they're holding up. They're just fine. But I'm the type who takes 100% responsibility for children in my store. I call mall security because I'm freaking out about the need to watch them. At this point, I have to make a return and do a bunch of customer maintenance. No way to keep track of the kids. Turns out mall security called the cops. The officers show up about 25 minutes after this lady left her kids. The lady gets down and makes small talk with the boys while the man waits outside. Things slow to a crawl I am the store. So my fellow employees entertain the boys while I speak with the officers. Apparently their mother had gone to the other mall across the effing 4 lane street. At 7.30pm. During crazy busy shopping time. She eventually did come back for them. But it had been close to an hour. And in Ohio. That is way past what counts as child abandonment. I don't know what happened to her them. But all I remembered is the shock of who the heck thinks that's a good idea and omg is she going to jail while I watch the officers escort her and her children away. Yikes. I'm guessing build a bear. When I was 15 I got my first actual job. It was at a clothing store and my first day was Black Friday. I thought it wouldn't be a big deal because I was hired for men's formal wear. When I show up at 4am, the manager tells me I'm working women's shoes today only. Absolute madness. The worst part is shoes salesmen get commission. But since I didn't have employee numbers I got only minimum wage. Losing out of hundreds of dollars extra pay. That's probably why they put the new person on that job. When I worked at Best Buy I watched two elderly ladies get in a fist fight over a Nintendo DS. That and the cleaning the aftermath of Black Friday. Looked like a grocery store before a hurricane. Man. I used to love working Best Buy Black Friday. I'd work 14 hour shifts. Usually getting overtime. On the whole time so time would fly. I actually hated 12-4 because it was completely dead and those hours dragged on. I used to work at Walmart during the late 90s. I worked overnights unloading trucks. And back then the store I worked at didn't have mechanized lifts to get stuff up into the bins in the back. So stock reserved for the blitz sale was all thrown up there by hand. Anyways 3 hours to go we had to get 3 pallets worth of 19 inch Symphonic CRT TVS down. My co-worker, Alan, didn't want to throw them down one at a time. So he pushed a pallet of Pampers down first followed by all 3 pallets of TVS. Over the next few days several of those TVS came back as returns. I try to think that they were crap, but also wonder how many were damaged during the fall. I would trust that TV as much as a Sony or Panasonic. IT sounds like a cheap knockoff. About 15 years ago, I was working at a bookstore in a mall. Somehow, around 5pm maybe, I found myself the only employee in the entire store. Not a single co-worker to be found, and we were slammed with customers. We usually had music playing in the store, controlled by an ordinary 5 CD stereo in the back office, and of course this is the day the inoffensive holiday music gets brought into circulation. Around the time I found myself alone, I noticed the stereo had become stuck on repeat, just playing the same song over and over. It was at least an hour before I was able to get away from the counter, and so that was the day I was forced to listen to some kind of generic a very jazzy jingleables some 30 times back to back. With one it's not unusual. I was working at a gourmet stop in 2010 on Black Friday. Saw a kid pull a plastic knife from the food court on another kid. I almost passed out laughing. Guy tried to steal a Bluetooth speaker this Black Friday at Best Buy. After we caught him and called the cops he was searched. The cops ended up discovering three items he was hiding. 1. Loaded gun. He did not have a concealed carry permit nor was it a registered weapon. 2. Bag of black tar H. 
3. JBL Flip 3 Speaker. This man will now be serving hard time because he wanted an $80 speaker. Nice. This is why you're only supposed to do one crime at a time. Just today I sold a couch to a guy who drove a Prius with no roof rack. We do not deliver and he wouldn't leave until we found a way to get this thing secured to his car somehow. Not only had he clearly not planned ahead or thought it through, he was a total jerk about it and insisted on making it our problem. We ended up using half a spool of twine to tie this thing down and he had to climb in through the window because the twine went through his doors. I really wish I had taken a picture. At one point he complained to our GM, who had no idea what we were supposed to have done to appease this moron. Finally, we insisted that he sign a waiver before leaving because we were not about to be held responsible for his own stupidity. Of course, this was also during the busiest part of the day. I don't mind helping load or tie down for customers, but this guy took the cake. Man. My furniture store only offered curbside assistance for not allowed to lift or maneuver a product into somebody's vehicle. Lifesaver. Worked greets at American Eagle today. My job was to stand at the front and tell you what the sale was. Some lady walked in with like 8 bags and the alarm went off. So I smiled and said that it went off most likely because there's possibly still a tag on one of her items. This was her response. I just walked in and you're already accusing Emmy of stealing and then stormed off. Nothing special honestly. Just another day of retail. Yep, small Canadian town life. Sounds like she probably was stealing. I worked at a big box store last year. I was in charge of answering the phone. Only, our cordless handsets were broken so I literally could not leave the fitting room counter because that's where the landline was plugged in. So of course it was super busy, and I find out right away that if I parked a call and walkied the proper department to take the call, that call would not be taken because all the other employees were too busy assisting customers who were in the store. Even if I asked a question about item availability over the walkie, nobody answered because they were too dang busy. Yes, our store had little scanner devices that we could use to check on item availability, but not a single dang member of management in that store thought to reserve one for the telephone operator. After asking for one over the walkie three times and receiving no response, I gave up. The end result of this was that customers would call to see if we had an item in stock, and I would have to tell them that. To be honest, I had no idea. As you can imagine, the customers did not like this at all. One of the managers installed new cordless handsets about an hour before my shift ended, but the 8 hours prior had been absolute heck. Oh, and a few days later, I got pulled aside by a supervisor who hasn't even been in the store during my shift that day. She said that apparently I wasn't my usual cheery self on Black Friday, and that I had told a customer over the phone that I didn't know if we had an item in stock. The customer had actually called back and complained. It took everything I had not to go off on her, and the only reason I didn't was because she wasn't there during my shift and none of it was her fault. But to the other members of management, of freaking course I told that person I didn't know if his item was in stock. I had literally no freaking way of knowing. You did not give me any of the tools I needed to do my freaking job, and you ignored me when I asked for them. And then you wanna coach me on my customer service? Oh heck number, that's on you, suckers. I am so glad I no longer work there. Sounds like the operators at my target, except our management makes sure they get a scanner and have someone to check things manually if needed. About 6 years ago I was working at a mall bookstores cafe, I had the opening shift, which, thankfully because it was in a mall, was 8am to 2pm. Unfortunately, the late shift person called in sick, so I had 2 hours off before a 4pm close shift. While that sucks, it wasn't the worst part of the day. I actually had a customer who was stalking me and spent the entire day sitting in the cafe reading a book and occasionally coming up to order something new. Anytime I wasn't behind the counter or in the back room he followed me around, including during my 2 hour shift gap. I didn't dare go to my car on my break, because I didn't want him knowing what it looked like, and my manager didn't want to call security on him if he didn't actually approach me. Worst Black Friday ever. Luckily, two weeks later he didn't approach me while I was working and asked if he could clip my fingernails as a keepsake. That was enough to get him banned from not only the store, but also the mall. My manager also made sure someone walked me to my car for the next few months, 
so it was all good. Man, I hope that manager learned that maybe kinda annoying one customer is preferable to having a super uncomfortable and scared employee. Not retail, but I worked at a restaurant that is right across the street from the mall, and open Black Friday, so naturally after people get great deals on whatever they come eat. Anyway, I'm sitting in back of the house Black Friday morning, waiting for my inevitably long shift to start. It was incredibly busy as it was but I wasn't about to clock in early. I was beasting with one of the managers when I heard a hostess scream through the walkie help help. So I immediately rushed to the entrance to see two grown men on the ground fighting, one in nothing but his underwear, and my shift leg trying to pull them off each other while screaming freaking stop. This is a family restaurant there are children here I jolted forward in an attempt to break up the fight. This is where it gets weird. Everyone is gathered around this small area watching or trying to help when someone grabbed a fire extinguisher and started spraying us with it so we have a bunch of people trying to break up a fight between a man in his underwear and some other dude and someone spraying us with a fire extinguisher while we have Christmas carols playing in the background. Finally we get the fight broken up. Cops show up. The whole nine yards. Turns out the guy got the last TV voucher or whatever for the best buy and the other guy got pee and followed him over to try to buy the TV from him. The one who got the TV told him to frick off so this guy took off his pants and they got into a fight. Guy 1 got the last TV voucher from Best Buy and Guy 2 was very angry about that. So he followed him over to the restaurant to try and buy the TV from him. Guy 1 told Guy 2 to frick off so Guy 2 took off his pants and started to fight Guy 1. I work at a gas station, so I'm somewhat immune to Black Friday at us. The worst we got this morning was cars lined up to get gas. On the other hand, we had a few Walmart workers come in, and they looked like they just came back from the war. Both of them had ladies ram their carts into their legs to get at the merch. The guy said it was just a flurry of shredded plastic and hands when they kicked off the sales. Nobody got a full break, and the catered food was cold and well picked over by the time they could break. A car had sideswiped another car, damaging the paint pretty bad and tried to drive off. On top of all, they're not getting time and a half for working Thursday night into Friday morning, cause it's not technically a holiday anymore. At least he got a homemade cupcake. I brought in cupcakes for the ladies working Thanksgiving at my job. Walmart never gives time and a half for working holidays. They used to add a hour of pay per hour work so overtime doesn't turn into triple time but now they are just giving PTO instead colon. I've worked quite a few Black Fridays, but the worst had to be Radio Shack. It was my first day, and I had no training. All I could do is point and hope to god they didn't ask me questions. Radio Shack, you have questions, we have blank stares. My first Black Friday was gross. We were relatively calm and then suddenly a lady bursts into the store with a cart from Target and heads to our bathroom. I shrug it off. A few minutes later a customer asks where the bathroom is and I point her to it. She comes back seconds later saying that someone used the bathroom on the floor. It was my first job and my first Black Friday so I called a manager. My manager went in and rushed out. Apparently the lady who first rushed in, took a crap but missed. Instead of in, she did it next to the toilet bowl. My manager ended up having to clean it up. Thank god for not being certified in bodily fluid cleanup. I went outside the bathroom and saw car tracks of poo making a little path through the store. I have no clue how it got on the wheel. I mopped it up and later in the day I found another poo spot by almost under one of the couches. I have no clue how that happened. It was disgusting. Surprisingly I was still able to eat after that but my manager couldn't. We haven't had anything like that happen again and instead of Black Friday, it was known as Brown Friday. I work at a kid's store where almost everything was half off today, but the thing is I normally help moms and grandparents at the register, so I don't see Best Buy style murder over televisions. I get old ladies yelling at my co-workers over the price of smiley face pillows and women bringing in hundreds of dollars worth of clothing and kitty makeup they bought weeks before at full price. Just to buy it all back right away at sale price after the return's over. A grandpa shouted this is bulls at me because I told him we were out of bath robes. Good times. I also worked at Best Buy. 2001. I won't name location. To this day BB was one of the worst jobs I've ever had. 6am. Mall store. People were climbing the gates. 
literally. They opened the gates and this massive flood of people ran from front to back. Some ran past me, spun around and screamed a question at me then darted off again. Management told us that morning that it was a day we do dang near a million dollars in business, in one day. Therefore, it really didn't matter how we treated people, sell service plans, sell accessories, the cash flow and revenues will be there, make our numbers look good, paraphrasing. One woman punched another and took the last of some digital camera to the front of the store. My tall, lanky friend reached between two people arguing over the last hard drive, took off from them, and handed it to some other guy and told them if you're going to act like children, I'll treat you as such. I got moved up front to work crowd control. They had lined up a bunch of big screen TVs to channel people down the media aisles, CDs, DVDs, which those lines went all the way down those aisles, and then all the way back around the outside. I had customers tell me they were glad I was there, because they were going to knock out the guy that was there before me. I'm pretty sure one two of those TVs were tipped over as well. In total, an absolute crap show that I do not wish upon anybody. I refuse to G shopping on Black Friday now. I love your tall, lanky friend. What made you quit a job on the spot? I had a very stressful job and was expected to answer slack messages from my boss at any time, or I would be fired. He was in a different time zone so often I would be woken up at 3am being yelled at to do something. One day in the office, he was talking crap about me on slack and accidentally posted it to a channel I was in. I was killing myself for this guy and he didn't even appreciate it. I packed up and left. Best thing I've ever done. When I was 16, I was a bus boy off the books. Made $250 a week working 35 hours a week because they paid per day as opposed to per hour. Manager comes to me and says they're restructuring how the pay scale is and said he wanted me to work less days, same amount of hours but for half the pay. I made him repeat to me his plan and once he confirmed it I said give me money for the week because I'm leaving. Uh, plus one for asking for clarification first. Worked at a restaurant as a server, we'd just catered a large wedding reception. The owner's wife was chatting with the wedding party all night and occasionally getting the drinks. At the end of the night she said she's taking her share of the tip since she helped so much. I say fine even though that's illegal in our state. An hour and a half after the party ends the restaurant is still a mess and the owner's wife was just standing around talking while I was supposed to clean up. It was almost midnight and I'd worked my other job earlier that day. I walked out without saying a word. They ended up giving me all of my tips on my last check. Even though that's illegal in our state. For anyone reading, that's illegal in every state. 100% of tips belong to employees in the chain of service, though some states are more restrictive than the new federal standard for pools. They ended up giving me all of my tips on my last check. They dodged a bullet. I got blamed for something that wasn't my fault, was in an argument with our VP or marketing because I had the audacity to suggest a solution that would have avoided our problem instead of accepting fault for something I didn't do. He told me he doesn't pay me to think, so that was my last day. I had a manager tell me I don't pay you to think I pay you to work. The owner overheard and told him if this guy, me, has a good idea. You better freaking consider it. Manager goes back to the owner and says if you want him to think then he can think his way into my manager job and stormed away. Got fired shortly thereafter. I did not get his job. LOL. Not on the spot, but I was passed over for a promotion for a role I'd been doing unofficially for 6 months. There was no official position for it when I started doing it. It was one of the manager's responsibilities and they delegated it to me. Honestly I was happy to do it and I was frequently praised for how efficient and thorough I was doing it. So when an official position opened up to do it full time, I seemed like the obvious choice. A bunch of my co-workers didn't even apply for it because they told me they didn't think there was any point since I was obviously getting the job. They gave it to a guy that worked in a different department and had no experience using the complicated system required for that job. Then the manager asked me to train him in it. Except I wasn't really asked. I was told in a way that sounded like it was asking. We called it being voluntold. I refused. I said to the manager if I'm not good enough to get the job. I'm not good enough to teach someone else how to do it. The manager then accused me throwing a temper tantrum. I quit about a week later. 
Honestly that wasn't the only reason. That was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Even the other managers couldn't believe he said that. I worked as a manager in this really awesome cafe bar. My interview was basically drinking a bottle of wine with the owner whilst chatting. Totally relaxed vibe. Local artwork on the walls, which he sold for no commission. Indie music has background noise so you could still have a conversation etc. One of the guys who worked there was in a band and would often go on tour, and she always made sure his job was waiting for him when he got back. Fast forward 3 years and she became pregnant with twins and decided that she wanted to be a Sam so she sold the place to a young guy who purchased it as a gift for his fiancé. A nice gift, no, but it soon became apparent that he did this because she couldn't actually hold down a job due to even the most simplest of tasks being entirely beyond her. It took me 4 weeks to teach her how to use the coffee machine. She spent the evening shifts giving freebies to her mates and she totally gave up on using the panini machine. After finally mastering the coffee machine, she announced that they were going to be redecorating so we would either have to take a week off and paid or use our holiday time. Everyone was forced to use the holiday time. Came back a week later and we totally didn't recognize the place. It now had white walls with huge TVs blaring out dance music, in a space that only had 12 tables. So loud that we couldn't hear what anyone was saying. We checked the rotors and I had lost 10 hours a week but the band guy had lost 20 hours. Naturally we asked WTF. And she informed us that she could run the place without us so cut out hours. We asked if they could delay the new rotors by a month to give us chance to find extra work elsewhere. I was okay as I had a second job that begged me to be full time. But band guy didn't. She said that as we didn't have contract with her, she didn't have to give us any notice. Not gonna lie, I was fuming. So I took my apron off, placed my keys on the counter and said that as we didn't have a contract I didn't have to give any notice that I quit. Then promptly walked out and never went back again. The place closed down within 3 months. Oof I had flashbacks when you said young guy who purchased it as a gift for his fiancé. The worst being hired to sell cars, then in the middle of training I get pulled aside and told I'm being moved to lot attendant. That position paid minimum wage and I didn't even get a chance to be on the sales floor. Left and never went back. I was in my mid 20s at the time and was trying to find a possible career. Didn't have time for that bulls bait and switch. Car dealerships, so sleazy they pull the all bait and switch on the staff, too. I worked as a pizza delivery driver in undergrad. I normally did the evening shift at a small, chain pizzeria about 15 minutes off campus. I always made sure that the schedule let me go before close, since I had 8am Hindi classes every morning. However, the manager never had enough drivers on shift. So, even if my schedule said I was out at 9pm, I'd rarely get to punch out before 10.30pm or 11pm. One night. I had a date and told the manager I'd have to leave on time. He looked me in the eye and said, we'll see about that. I left, and didn't come back. Similarly, another local pizzeria was notorious for its strict management. One of the shift managers was prone to having temper tantrums, and could often be heard screaming at line cooks or shrieking at servers. My car broke down on St. Patrick's Day, when I was scheduled to work. I had to pay $50 to get it towed home and I called in to tell the manager what happened. He yelled at me, and accused me of making up excuses to go out and drink. I offered to show him the receipt and repair bill, and he just hung up the phone. A day later, he called me and said, we're cool, but you owe me a shift. I told him that I couldn't take more shifts, because I was a full-time student, and he said he didn't care. I went in on my next scheduled shift, picked up my paycheck, and told the nearest manager that I quit. The latter pizzeria was genuinely and generally terrible. The owner got a real kick out of the time he went outside and fired every driver whose delivery sign wasn't lit up by sunset. He also flouted minimum wage laws and didn't adequately compensate tip drivers who failed to earn their $7.40 per hour. If only I'd been a bit older and thought to report them. I am a physician assistant and took a job at an urgent care. After working there for about a month I noticed some irregularities, such as some medications being expired and sometimes a lack of supplies. I wrote that off as the office manager not being as astute as she should have been and brought it up to the doctor who owned the place. He said he would talk to her and straighten it out. 
Then one of the medical assistants came to me and said you know this has been going on forever, right? She then said that things would never change and to get used to it because the expired medications had been on the shelf for months and they were told to never throw them out. She then also told me that the autoclave, the machine that sterilizes instruments, was broken and all they did was wash the instruments in soap and water and put them in the autoclave anyway to get them as clean as possible. That was the end of that. I made out a formal complaint to the state medical board and never showed up again. The state actually came in the very next day and raided the place. They shut him down immediately. They found so many things wrong that not only did they keep the place out of business, they suspended his license. He was also prosecuted on federal charges because he was running a scam for truck driver physical exams. Crap, you probably inadvertently saved some lives. Good on you. Not me but a middle aged tradesman where I work. I work underground and it isn't for everybody, terrible environment and whatnot. This particular individual starting working and after a few weeks decided that it wasn't for him. Bad conditions and hostile supervisor. He approached the boss at the morning meeting and told him that he wasn't going underground and that he was quitting. The boss told him that he had to give him 2 weeks notice and without missing a beat the guy replied, for the next 2 weeks you're gonna notice that I'm not here, turned around, packed his crap and left was never heard from again. Man that's a great line. I'll have to remember that. I worked at Walmart for a short time. I worked as hard as I possibly could to unload their pallets of merchandise. I always thought I was so dang fast. I studied the process and I believed I perfected it. Every single day my manager came up to me and told me I needed to be faster. So I did. And the fast pace made me lose a little focus causing me to break a finger. I let management know that I might be a little slower due to my injury and they straight up told me we won't tolerate any laziness and wrote me up when I didn't meet their ridiculous standards. So I went home after my shift and never returned, never called, never formally quit. I just never came back. Frick Walmart. We had one of those managers at GameStop. Every conference call with the DM, no matter how well we did, you can do better. Then we were third in the entire company one week. As the store manager was starting the conference call, I said, he'll congratulate you on the performance and immediately follow with, you can do better. It was that. Verbatim. <laughs> Worked as a cashier in a local shop. One night two guys came at me with knives trying to get in the till. I just walked away and said have at it as it wasn't worth the minimum wage to get into it with a couple of guys waving knives at me. After they ran out the store I picked up my mobile and called the police then called the store manager. The next day, the district manager meets me as I turn up for my shift the very next day. Her first words were it was very unprofessional of me to be on my phone while in work. I laughed at her and told her she could take this as my notice and walked out. I never had a problem with being held up but the sheer gall of that got me. Also very unprofessional to get stabbed on the job. Lucky you got out of that place. I worked for T-Mobile store, authorized reseller, not an actual dealer. One week, I had an amazing week, sold 55 phones. Brand new activations on a business account with 55 high end phones at that time. When I got my next check, they said my paperwork was not in order and thus they couldn't pay me. As a side note, they always told us to make copies of all paperwork in case this happened so you can show it to the manager and get it resolved within a day. I went over my backup paperwork with my boss. He said everything looked to be in order and he would have the office cut me a check. I went to the office and they told me it was still not in order. I immediately gave them my store key and quit on the spot. I did go through collections and they did settle before I took them to court. The company did go out of business after a few years because they tried that with many other employees and eventually led to an investigation by the government, according to an old co-worker I bumped into years later. Whilst closing the cafe, a large man came up to the thankfully locked front door and stared me down. He refused to leave and didn't say a word, just stared at me. It was the only way to exit the shop at that hour so I called my boss telling her I'm about to call the cops or do you know who the frick this guy is? She just told me it's something I'm going to have to deal with as the coffee shop is next to a train station so there are a lot of vagrants in the area. I called the police who escorted me to my car. The guy was screaming into the garbage when I drove away. Nope the frick right out of there real fast. 
walked into the interview. Everything went well. Accepted the job offer. Went to the front desk to do the paperwork and noticed that the contract had a different pay amount. And that I would be interning for the first month for $100 a week. I asked first about the amount difference, was told no, this the standard contract, it just hasn't been updated for your specific offer, I told them they'd need to edit and initial the changes before I would sign, oh, that's not how things work here, I thanked them for their time and left without signing anything, they called me back on the day I was supposed to have started asking where I was, I told them because didn't sign the contract, I was never an employee, haru boy that was a fun call. I worked at McDonald's when I was 16. We used to get a free McDouble hot and spicy with a small fries and drink for our lunch break. One day when I went on break the franchise owner was there and when he noticed I asked for cheese on the hot and spicy he attempted to make me pay for the whole meal because cheese wasn't free. I thought he was joking so I laughed and started walking towards the break room until he yelled at me not to walk away from him in front of customers and my co-workers. I couldn't believe it. This grown but successful businessman was hounding a 16 year old for a slice of cheese. Told him I wasn't gonna pay, put the food down and walked out. They tried calling me to come to work that weekend I told them no thanks and never went back. That's crazy. Cheap butt guys. I worked at McDonald's when I was 18. And we could eat anything we wanted. I'd make quesadillas in the kitchen. And the mangers would ask for some too lol. I worked for an attorney. I was 7 months pregnant. I was supposed to be a secretary but instead I was constantly being sent out as a process server. In July, at the end of my 3 months, August, I was supposed to get a raise and she said that she couldn't give me a raise. The day she said that, I left at lunch and never went back. She was an awful person and the guy I replaced told me that he felt sorry for me on my first day as he was leaving. I should have left that day. Once as a teenager at a new job I got my hand smacked by the owner the first day because I was writing with my left hand. Walked out. Had a job about 10 years ago doing tech support for an ISP for a week. The pay was minimum wage and bonuses you earned for selling people stuff. And by stuff I mean terrible, overpriced services that you can get online for free. I was still in the phase of training where I had a supervisor listening in on my calls and after a call, he told me I should have paused to try and sell him some crappy antivirus service before I fixed his problem. Handed in my headset right there. Felt so skeevy when people call you for help and you have to turn into a telemarketer. Worked for a privately owned bakery for exactly one week. The owner's son comes in, walks past the counter and into the bathroom. He comes out a few minutes later without acknowledging me or my co-worker. Gets into his car and drives away. We both looked at each other then opened the door only to find this guy literally crap all over the toilet seat and the toilet paper holder. I called the owner, told her what happened and she said to deal with it. So I asked my co-worker if she wanted to clean it up because I wasn't going to. She declined and I told her I was walking out. She did as well. We locked up the store and told the owner we quit but would reconsider staying if her son came back to clean up his own mess. She yelled and berated us for 20 seconds before I said goodbye and hung up. Jesus Christ. That family must have some crazy mental issues. Began working at a Persian restaurant in the kitchen. I overcooked a steak slightly. The owner came back through a plate at us then a hot meat skewer before storming off to his office. I dropped my apron grabbed my bag and told him I was leaving. His response was okay at the end of the night you can go. My response was clearly you don't understand. I'm leaving right now. Here's my parking pass. I'll expect my check in the mail. I got mugged on a delivery for Domino's. And came back to the shop crying and panicked. Had my phone, wallet, and pizza taken. Told my manager what happened. Anon. Are you hurt? No. But I lost my phone and wallet. I need to call the police. No time for that. Here's your next delivery. It was like two blocks from where I was just mugged. I just went home. The police never really did much to get my phone and wallet back. Not like they could. I had worked for a cleaning company and I had a total disaster of a person named Tina as my manager for about 4 months. Tina would work the night shift with a crew and basically did nothing. 
she would leave the majority of the work for me to do during the day when it was a lot harder to do as I had my own list of duties as well as whatever she left for me from her own list. I was tettering on the edge of quitting but I hadn't found a replacement when one day I got a call from head office that Tina had quit and for about a month the job was exceptionally better and I effectively was my own boss. Things were going remarkably smooth for again, about a month when I got a text message from Tina asking me to do a bunch of extra stuff. I called the owner and they told me that Tina had approached them about coming back and that they were rehiring her in her former position and I literally just packed up and walked out about an hour into my shift. I had zero intention of working another minute for that women and held to it. For a second, it was almost a happy ending. And then it wasn't XC hope you're doing better now though. I get a job at a restaurant. First day I show up and the heat is broken in the dead of winter. It was like 35 degrees. I ask the cooks if it's always like this, and they say yes. I walked immediately. I was getting married. I had a temp job, and told them on my first day that I needed a weekend off in a couple of months for my wedding. I reminded them every couple of weeks, had it on the calendar, and even reminded them that Monday. That weekend came, and I was on the schedule. I told my boss that I needed it off for my wedding, and she said, you're just a kid, can't you move it, we really need the parts, admittedly, I was 21 marrying my 19 year old girlfriend, but yeah, I laughed at her and left, we were scheduled Saturday and Sunday, two attendance points and you're fired, so I assumed that I'd be job hunting on Monday after my wedding, I went to another temp agency on Monday and had a job lined up for Monday evening, on Tuesday, the temp job called and asked if I was coming back. I told that person, the temp agency lady, what they'd done to me. She was upset that they'd done that, tried to get me to go back, but I liked the new job and stayed there. I was at a company for about a year and a half as an assistant project manager. In that year and a half, I had three different bosses, the newest one being a heavy micromanager. I was getting paid about 20% below the standard salary for the position, overworked without any additional compensation, and the overall culture of the company was just flawed. My boss started nitpicking my work at the end of the day. I told her I had plenty of time to get it done before the end of the day, but she kept pushing and escalating. She was borderline screaming and I just cut her off and said I'm not doing this crap anymore. I quit. She yelled back well I need IT and writing and I said back with the straightest face I don't have to do crap in writing. I quietly packed all my stuff up, said good luck to my co-workers, and left. A year later, after working a couple of other jobs, I accepted a project manager position with a competing company and make almost twice as much as I was making at the previous. And I get to post on Reddit while at work without getting yelled at. After working at a company for 5 years with a set schedule having weekends off, we got a new supervisor that told me no one gets set schedules here and told me I'd have no weekend day and they would be split. I was already having a bad day, my transfer request was denied, and supervisors were on my butt like they owned it. Nearing my lunch break, I was stopped by a customer asking about a price check. Me, not able to do a price check, said please take it up to the front. They can help you there. Wasn't good enough. The customer proceeds to berate me, almost making me cry. Finally she says, how about you just go kill yourself? Like what? Knowing that management wouldn't do anything. I just left. Frick that. Being abused for minimum wage? Not worth it. I don't understand customers that blame the random frontline workers for stuff that is clearly out of their control. The gas station attendant did not raise prices. The person working returns at Target did not break your docker key. The customer support person you called did not mess up your Netflix subscription. I was working for a financial company in Sokol for about a month at the time. It was a little stuffy, but otherwise okay. Until my manager came over asked why I took so long in the bathroom. Literally, 5 minutes to take a dump. He mentioned something about having to count it as a break and me being more careful in the future or something. I laughed handed him my badge and left. Asked for a raise and was told okay. Next morning, Friday, I was told by the same person who agreed with the raise that I should put a few more years in and then we'll talk again. Locked my toolbox at the end of the day and called a tow truck to pick it up. 
Shop manager was shocked that next Monday to find an empty spot where my tools were and couldn't understand why I left. You are braver than me. I was told I'd get a raise and stuck around waiting for it for 6 months before finally jumping ship. This was after 4 years of my career with no change in pay whatsoever and consistent, good quality work. Now I advocate for myself. LOL. I had an inside hint from HR that there was about to be mass layoffs and my name was on the list. I scheduled my week long vacation and returning the day before layoffs were presumed to have happened. My boss reamed me out for daring to take a vacation. She said I would never advance in the company if I chose such a formative time in a project to take a vacation. She told me I would never be an executive producer if I went on a vacation before project launch. Even though I wouldn't be able to touch it for the week I was away anyways. And that I would always be known in the television industry as lazy. I chilled. Took my vacation. And returned. She was mad and said that she was upset with me for having left and made her take care of my project for me. Chewed me out in front of the entire company in the conference room. I chilled and was like aren't you laying off a bunch of us tomorrow? I'm just waiting for you to fire me so I can collect unemployment. Entire room literally starts panicking and management tries to understand how the frick I knew about layoffs. It was my one true Regina George causing chaos moment in my life. My grandfather, who I considered like a father, passed away after a long stay in hospital. We were closer than he was with his own kids, and our bond was quite special. I spoke to my manager about getting the day of his funeral off, since I was organizing part of the arrangements and having a day or two of bereavement leave, and he agreed. The day of the funeral finally comes and the staff start calling me, leaving me messages asking why I'm not at my shift, and telling me, while I'm in a suit hosting family members at the funeral home, that I have to find someone to replace me or face repercussions. Needless to say, I told them to figure it out, and never looked back. What is the ballsiest way somebody you know quit their job? One of my cooks calmly walked to the ice machine in the middle of the shift. I didn't think too much of it, until he came back with a bucket of ice and dumped it in the fryers. The entire kitchen went dead silent for what seemed like forever. Then all of a sudden the low boiling noise started. Within seconds the fryers are throwing boiling oil all over the place. About 30 seconds later they catch on fire and the fire suppression system goes off. It sprays a 6 inch layer of foam everywhere. The guy walked to the microphone in the kitchen and calmly says frick all of you, I'm out. We had to shut down for 2 days to clean up the mess and the cook was arrested and sued. It was epic, but couldn't have been worth it in the end. Bucket of ice and dumped it in the fryers. If anyone hasn't worked in a kitchen and is trying to envision this, think a volcano of 350 degree oil. Working at a movie theater, just kept popping popcorn, like, overflowing onto the ground, didn't even look away until the manager said you're fired. Friend worked at a major shopping center in a deli, it was his last day anyway so he wasn't exactly trying to get fired. He changed one of the signs on the trays of me to hand strangled veal. Not one person noticed all day. I made the receipt header for a coffee shop I was leaving say hail satan. His reign is upon us. The blood of the innocents will cleanse us all it took a week before anyone noticed. I had just walked into a taco bell about a minute before where someone quit on the spot and freaking trashed the place I mean food and cup and bags and drinks all over the place behind the counter. One worker girl was frantically on the phone with police just freaking out saying he trashed the place he trashed the place. Needless to say I did not get my bean burrito. I'm genuinely upset that you didn't get the burrito. My brother quit his last job. He had been hired to do the digital art for some advertising projects at the company with the promise that he would be advanced director of the advertising art division if his project was successful. He worked hard. The client loved it. His management gave him another project. Same result. The client loved his work. Fast forward 2 years and he has had 26 successful projects. And he is updating the company's website for them at no cost. He never billed for web dev hours since he did web development before he went into advertising. Lo and behold, they say that they are hiring a new manager for the art division. My brother is understandably upset, so he goes to see his boss. He finds out that not only is he not getting the position he was promised, but he is essentially getting demoted since they are restructuring the art division. 
He went back to his desk and made 26 phone calls, then logged onto the company's public portal and reverted the website to the original version and cleared off all the files he had worked on. He walked back to his boss's office, told him he was quitting and left the building, saying goodbye to his friends on the way out. He went back to doing freelance ad work and was making almost three times the money while working at home. Worked at a restaurant a few years ago that was the pits. It was a terrible place to work but the tips were great so I stuck with it. One guy had had enough of it after his paycheck bounced. So he went into the manager's office, looked her square in the eye and said I quit. You freaking be and placed his apron on the desk. As he was walking through the kitchen he took one of the sacks of flour we used to make dough, threw it over his shoulder and said this is mine and walked out. If you're going to appropriate food in lieu of your paycheck I suggest you raid the filet mignon and the saffron, not the flour. Some background first. I worked at a company that had an owner who was not paying people for their final two weeks when they resigned. I was one of those who got stiffed, later got my pay when the state intervened. After I quit, a former employee of mine, a tech writer working on a big project from his home office decided that the missed and late paydays and horrible treatment from the owner was enough. He decided to quit without notice. He gathered up all the equipment that the company gave him and he took it into the office. He dropped it on the floor and said, I'm out. B one of the directors asked him if he was going to be available for any transition or other information exchange to which he replied, when you pay all the people who have left and have still not received their pay, I will transition knowledge, to my knowledge, that transition never occurred, yet he received his final two weeks pay and unpaid vacation without issue, go figure. The Philly run. A friend worked in Northern Virginia at an office job he hated. On the day he decided he was done. He clocked in, left, drove to Philadelphia, over 2.5 hours, for a cheesesteak, returned to the office job, and clocked out. Now, if he bought cheesesteaks for all the sound people he worked with, that would have been up there with the best of the best. A bartender I worked with had a really bad run, was a little strung out on coke and life in general. But anyway, we had this really bad day at work and this woman kept pestering us about the service. Eventually he just took the money she was holding up to get our attention, got his lighter out from his pocket, set fire to the bill and held it in front of her while saying something like frick you, you retarded fricking bee. Then he just left and never came back. He is kinda crazy, so I am happy he left. I didn't work with him. But I'm reminded of the JetBlue male flight attendant who popped the emergency exit slide, popped open two beers, drank them on the way down the slide and left. When the police arrived at his house he was mid intercourse with his wife. I guess there comes a point when enough is enough, lol. I like to think I can drink fast, but dang two beers on a slide. I need to shake this man's hand, or probably give him a fist pound through the prison glass. I was shopping at Walmart one night, probably around 8 or 9, for some laundry detergent. As I was looking for the right aisle, a navy blue collared shirt went soaring from cash register 11 to aisle 14. I turned to my right and saw a shirtless black man with a 90s Mike Tyson fade, a golden Jesus necklace, and a chest to that reads Stu Man Chu. After watching his shirt slowly float to the ground. He proceeded to go to his register's intercom and say attention all customers. This end just quit after putting his high flying middle finger down. He ducked underneath his register, went ahead and pulled out a folded razor to folded razor to folded razor he assertively put on his Jansport backpack, pried open the scooter, flung the base of it around his hip, and with one rooster swipe of the shiny Walmart floor. He went from 0 to 60 in 3.5. The automatic doors diverge like the Red Sea. And the man, without any regret, scooted his way into the arms of unemployment. Thank you for the gold OP, you made my day. Scooted his way into the arms of unemployment, that made my day. Been working at Walmart for a good 7 years. The only time anyone actually quit in a way to be any type of story happened about 3 years ago or so. He was a CSM, customer service manager, and was at the return desk trying to help these two ghetto butt ladies. They were trying to return something with no receipt. Problem besides the missing receipt was you could tell the item was bought many many years ago. So once he declined it, they started to cause a scene. 
making fun of him for working at Walmart and saying he wasn't going anywhere in life act. Act. What they didn't know was, Walmart s actually his second job and he actually worked for some government branch. After about 15 minutes of their hazing, he quietly removed his badge, came around the counter, removed his shirt, got on the intercom, yelled he quit, then looked at the two ghetto ladies and asked now that I don't work here anymore would you like to go outside like you suggested earlier. They were shocked and just standing there, then he just replied with I freaking thought so, you stupid hoodrats, and then just walked out. While I worked a crappy dishwashing job part time, one of the other guys who did the shift before me was pretty scummy, imagine your stereotypical British chav, and it was exactly him. The big dishwashing machine was a little excitable, it would blast water towards the opening hatch so hard that it would leak pretty badly even when sealed shut, so, imagine the look of surprise on my face when I walked in for my shift to see a buck toothed chav, but naked, being blasted by scalding hot water head to toe from an open dishwasher yet still wearing a backwards, facing cap that was surviving the ordeal. He looked at me and I managed to decipher the opening sentence to done with a shit. Still naked and soaked, he confidently strode to his Mini Cooper and drove home. I never saw him again after that. The big dishwashing machine that's no way to talk about your man. Coworker was on his last weekend shift and had already landed a job elsewhere. He never got along with management but he did his job very well. Call center type of work with 247 365 support we have four people that work on the weekends and you have to scan your id badge and then immediately punch in your four digit code the doors were so scumbaggy that people on the weekday shift would just enter through the main lobby rather than fight the doors well according to his story and the security tapes that support his story it went down like this he arrived at 7 50 a.m and tried to punch in his card failed the first time no big deal Second attempt was a fail. After his fifth try he said he became so enraged that he decided to roundhouse kick the keypad. This bit a huge hole into the wall. He calmly reached into the wall and scanned his badge and punched in his code. Door opens perfectly. He worked Saturday and Sunday. Came in Monday to pick up his check and was promptly told that it was being held for damages to the property. Funniest story ever especially watching the tapes. Apparently it should be noted he had McDonald's for breakfast and had to drop the biggest stews ever so waiting for the door to cooperate was not an option. TL. DR. Coworker freaked out at the keypad and roundhouse kicked it. McDonald's hotcakes and sausage. Better than x slacks. I was bartending at the time. One of our buses had bushy red hair. One night our general manager told him he needed to get a haircut. He proceeded to get quite drunk after work and showed up with a shaved head, and a ziplock bag full of his hair, which he slid under the door to the office. This happened at the Best Buy I worked at right before I started. The story goes that a woman was at the Geek Squad desk yelling at one of our agents, telling him how bad he was at his job, and just being a general B. After about 15-20 minutes or so of him trying to explain what was wrong with her computer and putting up with this behavior he finally just snapped. My general manager was standing next to him, so he turned to my GM, said I quit the turned back to the lady, and with enough volume so that the warehouse team heard it clearly on the opposite side of the store, he yells directly in her face maam, you're a freaking C and then left forever. The legend has it that in certain parts of the store you can still hear the word C echoing through the walls. Another time as an assistant manager of a retail outlet I was passed up for manager yet again and a drinking buddy of the regional manager got the manager job with zero experience. I had already been running the store alone for a few months since the last manager quit. I made sure I had all the keys. The next morning I ordered an egg McMuffin meal and a coffee and sat and watched the entire mall open except for our store. A few hours later I get a call. Yes. I know the store is closed. I know because it can't possibly be open because I quit. I'm watching the store right now. Definitely closed. They lost most of the day's sales. Frick em. Not really ballsy, but by far one of the funnier things I've ever seen. I was sitting in McDonald's enjoying some chicken nuggets some time at night when one of the workers starts yelling and tramping around. 
He tires himself out pretty quickly and leaves with an Adam and freak you're not 5 minutes later he walks back in and says I bet y'all didn't think I was coming back he keeps bragging about his stellar achievement and then slowly slips into one of the workers hey, what time are you off? I need a ride. I lost it at that. TL. DN. McDonald's worker quits, leaves in a storm, then walks back in asking for a ride when he can't find one. In all fairness not many people can work at McDonald's and afford a car. A man and a woman I worked with were fraternizing. There was a no fraternizing clause in our contract. I knew them both fairly well. They told me and I have seen them together outside of work. It was a stupid clause but made paid well. Anyway company meeting. Talking about new directions and how they will start enforcing certain things more strictly. Manager asks for questions or comments. The guy raises his hand. Manager called on him. Frick you. Frick your rules. I quit. He stood up, walked over to the woman and kissed her. Turned and gave the manager the finger and walked out. I started clapping. No one joined in. Fratronizibk. I'm not normally one to point out someone's typo, but this one made me start giggling like an idiot. So thank you. Was at the trash collection facility disposing of an old sofa, and maybe a dead H. When the guy driving one of the blue recycling trucks go into an argument with his boss. The boss told him after he dumped his load of recyclables. He needed to park the truck in front of the shop and come collect his last paycheck because he was fired. I couldn't believe the boss's audacity to expect him to finish working after he'd already been fired. The guy flipped the handle on the truck while the boss was walking away. Pulled the pins on the tailgate and dumped 4 tons of glass bottles in middle of the parking lot. The noise was unbelievable. The boss was shouting at him. The employee flipped him the bird, went into the office and collected his last check. It was unfreaking believable. Am I the only one who would have finished the job and collected the check? I am such a sap. I worked at a bar when I was younger. Actually, I was a minor, but I needed to work and bartending was one of the few jobs that had a schedule that allowed me to go to school at the same time. The 40 something owner constantly sexually harassed me. I don't mean flirtation or passes. I mean asking me to suck his dong, commenting on my juicy pee and slapping my butt. Real Romeo. He even had an apartment above the bar. I couldn't complain to labor standards because I was working under the table, being underage and all. Anyway, fortunately, I had the fortitude to say no and keep myself safe from him but after a willy became harder to dodge and I couldn't handle other things that were going on at the bar so I decided to quit. On the night I decided was my last, I didn't charge any customer, mostly regulars, for any of their booze, ended up giving away a couple thousand in alcohol on the house and pocketing some pretty generous tips. In the same way I couldn't report him, he couldn't report me so, in the end, I felt it was a pretty fair frick you. TL. Doctor. Boz at a bar sexually harassed me so I gave out a bunch of booze on the night I quit. A technician we used to have also partially owned a strip club. He came in one morning, ripped out of his gird, in a limo. Three of the girls who worked for him were with him also. He got out of the limo, climbs up onto his toolbox in underwear and cowboy boots only, and just starts dancing like crazy, tells most of the management to frick off, climbs back down, and leaves. Needless to say, we hired him back 4 years later. My boss told me that, by the end of that day, I had to submit the name of one of my 3 employees to be laid off. After discussing with my GF on the phone, I wrote my own name down on a piece of paper and handed it to my boss. The look on his face was priceless. You are a class act. Your boss is a Dow Chicano. Summer job at landscaping. Job required us to take company trucks to the houses businesses whose lands were to be scaped. I had only been there for the summer, but the guy who quit was a full timer of 4 years. One day he accidentally does a wrong address. Hey, free flower bed touch up and the boss calls him threatening to make him pay. He is in an adjacent town at the time, so he calls his girlfriend to pick him up, leaves the truck where it is, calls the boss, quits, and tells him to go get his truck. My first day at a new chain convenience store, graveyard shift, I show up, no uniform, old chain was bought out by new chain, and the clerk is nowhere to be found. The parking lot is full of people loading store product into their cars. 
The most epic was a lady with a trunk full of huggies, and every 40 ounces be a bottle the store had left. My first thought was that he was dead or tied up in the back. I look around for him. Can't find him. For all I knew, he could have been one of the people emptying store out. I go behind the counter. The cash register's empty, and two guys are working hacksaws on the safe under the counter. It took me a while to go through the paperwork thrown everywhere, until I found the store manager's phone number. I called him up. Now that I think about it I'm surprised the phone was still there. He says to call the police. He is on his way. I told the two guys working the safe I was calling the cops. And just as casual as you please, they got up walked out announcing to everyone what was happening. They all just casually left. Everyone got out of there, before the cops and manager showed up. And that's when I noticed on the door, was a sign taped to it. It said, clock just quit, store is unattended, take what you want. I spent the rest of the shift helping the manager clean up, and basically only sold gas the rest of the week while waiting on new inventory to come in. That's because he wasn't even supposed to work that day. Worked at a pipe drilling company, they issued a drug test. He told me he was accused of cheating, so he got upset, undid his overalls, and, with nothing underneath, proceeded to talk Ace Ventura style out of his butthole, saying he would never cheat, then stood up and whipped his dong around lasso style, followed by a move we now call the P helicopter, managed to fill up the test cup, 13 panel test, and he was positive for 12. Woman giving test had one week to go before retiring, but said it didn't matter and quit right then and there, and left a little less dry than she had came. TLDR, spinning around and P gets you fired. I used to work at this restaurant and one day I get a frantic call from my boss asking me if I could come in and work. Apparently the cashier and the sushi chef, who were dating, just flat out left. The only other people working there were the cooks and they had no idea they were gone until a good half hour or so. I thought that was pretty ballsy and stupid of them to just leave the restaurant unattended. Someone could have easily stolen one of the TVs, money from the register, or even stuff from the sushi bar. My Spanish teach once told me a great story about how he quit his telemarketing job. He was in college at our crappy community college and decided to just stop going to work. He went back 6 months later, acted like he had done nothing wrong. They didn't notice. He never went to work at the telemarketing center ever again. A year after, they called him and told him it wasn't working out. Must be a telemarketing thing. I just stopped going to my telemarketing job one day and six months later got a call asking if I planned on being in on Monday. I'm a lifeguard. At our facility, we have certain whistle signals that we use to signify certain things. Well one of these signals was one that meant a spinal injury, and not just some oh he's got whiplash kind of thing, like a oh crap his spine is broken. Anyway, this guy apparently had had enough of working at our water park and decided to just leave his stand in the middle of his shift, while blowing that signal on his whistle. Paramedics were called, and by the time they arrived, he was long gone. Was quite an interesting day. A couple of years ago my friends and me sat at the Rhine and were having a great time. It was a hot summer day and we had a little BBQ. On the Rhine there are a lot of tourist boats cruising up and down between Koblenz and Cologne. We sat there and suddenly we hear a loud splash from one of the smaller boats that was approaching us. It was a guy who jumped off the boat and swam to the shore, got out of the water and walked away. Later I've read in the newspaper that this was an employee who had enough. Still brings a smile to my face. Literally jumped ship. I worked in an office and one guy collected all of the little round paper discs from whenever we used a three hole punch. He put them all into an empty coffee can. Almost full. Then he rage quit after a dispute with the boss and flung that can full of tiny paper discs all over the office like confetti. It has been over a year since he left and we are still picking those things up. No joking. An employee came to work with a gun and shot himself in the head in the parking lot. What nerve. Didn't even give his two week notice. IT guy at my office sent a company wide email. 2600 people. On his way out that said IT was doing updates and could everyone please delete their system 32 file and then gave steps on how to delete it. My friend worked at a popular fast food chain. 
Their policy was to throw out food that was left by the end of the day. The manager was a huge dong and was being a huge dong this particular day. He also refused to give my friends overtime pay. A few hours before closing time, he grabbed two bags and stuff it with burgers and chicken. His co-workers was in on this. He walked home while handing out food to the homeless people. Oh and he wrote your dong on the manager's macbook, with a sharpie. My brother quit his job at Sizzler by getting naked, putting his name badge through his navel ring and walking through the customers shaking hands and saying thank you for the memories. I love you bro. I had a friend who was a salesman for a technology wholesaler back in the early 90s. He had recently found out that his pancreatic cancer had relapsed and he wanted to go out in an epic fashion. He made all of his orders for the next week by one get two free. Servers, hard drives, modems, etc. All BOGT. By the time the company found out, he had given away several million worth of inventory. He went home his last night shot himself up with a massive amount of morphine and died in his sleep from the overdose. My first serious girlfriend was a real knockout. She had an under the table gig selling hot dogs at a stand outside of a Home Depot when she was 16 or 17. I would hang out with her sometimes. The owner didn't like me hanging around and would often try to chase me off and tell her I couldn't be around the stand. I ignored him most of the time because I know I could hang out in front of Home Depot all I wanted. But typically I didn't want to cause trouble for her so I'd wander inside when he came around till he left. One day he came up and caught me near her and told me to leave and that if he caught me there again he was going to fire her. She got mad and asked him why he cared she always did her job. He responded by saying, I'm paraphrasing here, that he had hired her because her tea and butt sell more hot bits than he would but nobody is gonna take the bait when her boyfriend is around. She promptly picked up one of the bins full of mildly hot hot dogs and water and dumped it over his head, then asked me for a ride home. I didn't even have the chance to stand up for her. She had that crap on her own. Once again proving that biological testicles are not a prerequisite for cojones. Serious, Redditors that have gotten a fake degree, listed entirely fake accomplishments, or otherwise lied on a resume. How's that going for you? A friend's sister completely lied about a degree and experience working in the hotel industry. Every bit of all of her claims were entire fairy tale bulls. She got a job and within two years was the assistant manager of a very large, very nice hotel. They found out she lied about her degree and demoted her. She immediately went to the competition and got a job because she had experience. When I was younger I lied my buns off to get my first real job. Embellished everything from my final GPA with my degree, to the work experience I'd had previously. Lot of stretched truths or complete lies. But I was desperate. Had no money, nothing of value but an older car, and I had applied to 60 places the honest way and gotten 60 rejections. The job was hours and hours away in a different city, so I knew I would have to move for it and I figured why not no one was going to know me out there. I could get away with it, probably. It was brutal. The keep calm and carry on slogan might as well have been my bread and butter. I was in over way over my head for a few months. But I didn't let it stop me. I asked questions. I observed and learned everything I needed to learn. And I worked long hours without complaints. I was your typical yes man when the boss asked for something. Training. Volunteering. Shadowing the more experienced employees. I did it all. By the time I left that job, I had all of the skills I needed for the next one. I would never recommend lying for a high level position. But I can say that by getting my foot in the door at the first job I did set the foundation to build on for the next. I would not be where I am today if I hadn't. The college I went to was basically fake and mostly a scam. Think it tech. I finished all my courses and the required credits for a degree, but was told I needed to pay a remaining balance on my account of $2500 to receive my diploma. I worked in the financial aid department as a work study and found someone's username password under their keyboard. Still works 4 years later. I had access to all student financial data. When I looked at my account and saw that over 5k of the charges were fee related, I said frick that and told them they would never see a dime from me. Never received my actual degree but I put it on my resume. I have been a network engineer for 3 years. That piece of paper that I never actually got still cost me $29k. If I went as far as to log in, 
I would waive the fees for myself. Apart from a work permit application to work in a foreign country, I've never had to show my actual degree certificates to anyone. I think once you have a few years experience in work, people are less worried about that. On client calls, I'll sometimes imply that I understand what they are talking about when I don't in the moment, if when I know I have access to the resources to figure it out later, that is, a colleague who understands the subject better. My friend and I faked each other for references for years, we'd use our real names but fake positions. I'd get a call, hey if anyone should call you about me, you are the manager at Ziz and I did a great job and only left to go back to school or some bulls like that, I'd give him the same calls, we both got fired a lot. Funny thing is, no one ever called either one of us and we both got numerous jobs with our fake references. I read about this in the early 90s while I was in college. At the Caterpillar HQ in Peoria, Illinois, a woman applied for a management job claiming she had a degree in engineering and an MBA. Strangely, luckily, the department she managed improved for the first two years she managed it. Then it started to decline. HR got an anonymous tip that she had lied about her experience. It turns out she only had a BA in communications. I've always wondered how she could fake having an engineering degree. The year was 1993 and I needed a summer job while I was in college. I completely and totally lied when I was asked if I had computer experience and if I was proficient with WordPerfect. In my head I'm like, what's that but aloud I was like, sure. When I got the job, office reception, I didn't know how to find the power switch on the computer. I taught myself a lot of software that summer. And I ended it by installing a database and populating it with about 700 student files. I also sent my first email. I parlored that job into a temp secretary job when I graduated, which I was promoted out of into a full time job in HR. And I was promoted twice after that before I quit to live in a van. No lie. So I guess I did okay. In my friend's circle in the 90s was this one guy. Let's call him Dave. Dave was annoying and kind of a brat in his early 20s working at Egghead Software as a plain old full timer and cashier. I forgot why he hung out with us, but he did. Often the first to get trashed and drunken on gathering. The IT craze was starting, and some friends in the circle started to get IT jobs with huge salaries. Back then, it was kind of insane. Dave decided to hop on the bandwagon and be an IT guy, only he wasn't very smart or someone known for his planning skills. But he managed to snag a huge paying job as a senior networking technician. He knew nothing about networks. He was completely and utterly over his head. His resume was 110% lies. He claimed a CS degree and he never went to college. He had all the alphabet of certs. He claimed jobs he never had, never existed, and if you added up the experience, he must have got his degree when he was 10. We told him it was a bad idea. We cringed when he applied places, and gasped when he got a job paying $60k when that was a lot more money than it is now. Then we took bets when he'd be discovered and fired. It never happened. One of the first things he did was claim his certifications needed renewed, so they sent him to class and he eventually got certified. Now he had certs. The company got bought out, and he transferred there, got a huge bonus, and said he wanted to go back to school. They paid for 2 years of his tuition, I think, before he got laid off with a huge severance. He got a job making even more as a software architect, or some such nonsense. He got his degree, kept job hopping, and eventually, little over 6 years he didn't have to make up anything. We were furious, of course. Not only did he truly fake it until he made it, he was the worst type of person to succeed. Those that worked with him said he was insufferably smug laughably incompetent, and shamelessly brown nosing constantly. He made friends and played golf with sea levels, rubbed elbows with elected officials, and hung out with sports celebrities. He lived in a ridiculously expensive condo, drove custom-ordered Audis, and despite two DUIs, knew enough people to get off on technicalities, and boasted about it all. At some point around 1999, he vanished. Not like missing person vanished, but we just stopped hearing about him. I have heard all kinds of rumors, like he slept with some CEO's wife, burned out when hippie, or moved to the west coast after killing a bunch of kids in a van while drunk driving. 
They sound like wishful thinking endings more than real, though. I can't google him because his name is almost as common as John Smith. Laughably incompetent. This is all a matter of perspective. If the task is be a software engineer then it might fit the bill. But not for Dave. For Dave the goal is quite different. Fake your way into a farcically large salary. In this, Dave is all but incompetent. In this Dave excels. I didn't have it on my resume. But at the job interview I mentioned I was interested in eventually learning SQL. I had only dabbled in access. Didn't really admit to knowing anything about databases. The company happened to depend on SQL for practically 97% of the business. Eventually, the people, two people, that managed all our databases left the company. So after only working in IT for one Y one stroke two, I had just finished my associate's degree a week prior to the interview. They promoted me to junior DBA and I had zero training from predecessors. I ended up teaching myself enough SQL over a few months to carry my own weight. Got to know the third party support team pretty well. P. And learned the company's business from the ground up. I'm still working at the same place. Now I'm the main DBA and corporate application specialist for the entire company. Honestly. The way I went from stoner dropout kid to where I am now. Stoner DBA guy. Is still crazy to me. Things went so well I was expecting the sky to fall on my face every second. I lied about having a degree in an interview for a government contractor position, when in actuality I dropped out of college. Job I was applying for required a security clearance. I told the truth on the clearance paperwork. Nobody really brought up the discrepancy. That was 16 years ago and I still work in the same place. Out of college I was having some trouble getting work in my field without any professional experience software engineer. A compay contacted me saying that they had a program to train me then help place me in a job. I was a bit desperate at this point so I jumped at the guarantee of a job. They set me up in a 3 bedroom apartment with 5 other guys for a 10 week training program. The first few weeks weren't too bad. I was learning things that were never taught at school. At about the 5th week reality came down hard when they let us know that they were going to spruce up our resumes for us. The rest of the training would be them teaching us how to convincingly lie about the 4 years of experience they put on our resumes. We had to learn how to talk about companies and projects we were a part of, but none of them really existed. When we were good enough at it they started giving us job interviews. I did end up getting a job out of it and actually came clean to my boss about a year in. Which was against my contract from the training place. But frick them. I worked there for another year and left for unrelated reasons and now work somewhere else. It was so sketchy and I hated it. But it did get me a job and I used that job as experience to get a new job. So I guess things are going okay. 4 stroke 10 would not recommend though. Do you know JavaScript? And to my surprise, every other tester said no. Four years later, I now know JavaScript. And I'm technically the CTO. Although it's like a 10 person company. So what the heck does that even mean? Other job is organist. And almost every church that's looking is desperate because they didn't realize how boring church is without music. I'm really really grateful my two jobs are needs based. Because I have absolutely no qualifications for either. I've seriously massaged one date on my CV to minimize a career break. Never got discovered, and now there is almost no chance it ever will. I also upgraded one of my old job titles, because it said coordinator, and I actually had line management responsibility. I wouldn't lie about qualifications, doing projects I'd never done etc. I couldn't lie about qualifications on moral grounds, and claiming skills you don't have is a good way to get fired. I've done that so much I can't remember what the actual dates were. This whole thread scares me. In a sea of liars, I'm about to hit the job market once again exiting the military, and I refuse to lie embellish my resume. It makes me happy to see people like you. Not because honesty is a great thing, but because I know that I have a better shot for every person that doesn't embellish. Due to an unexpected layoff, we had to move to my then wife's hometown in 1998. A friend there told me about a job in HR with a large offshore vessel company that he was sure I could get. This friend was an hour manager elsewhere and with his help, I embellished the heck out of my resume. 
played heavily on my past Navy experience, and studied a HR college textbook to memorize some HR related terms, processes and such. Landed the interview, they loved me and offered me the job the same day. 19 years later, I've been with 4 different offshore companies in various jobs, advancing my salary with each move, and I'm now in a nice 6 figure management position, all based on a bull's resume that would have never withstood serious scrutiny. Beelzebub's taint, that's really inspiring, and thanks for your service. I knew with a guy who worked IT at a major insurance company for years and never got caught. When he did, it was for something really random comment. He was a nice guy, just quiet and kept to himself. Apparently wasn't quiet enough, and or didn't keep to himself enough. TL, DR, lied about skills, had to learn them on the spot, ended up getting me crazy promotions. Nobody really knows the truth. Lied on my resume that I knew how to write in PHP, MySQL, etc. I knew the basics of PHP and programming, but never really worked with MISCL outside of setting up a basic DB. Had no idea how to actually work with it. I got asked by the president of the company to write a program. Was completely lost. Ended up learning on the spot. A lot of reading. Trial and error and about a week later I had something functioning. That framework then spiraled into a 7 year project of building a massive set of tools used extensively by about 40 people today and is now business critical. I'm entirely self taught and that one lie ended up forcing me to learn not only PHP, MISCL and so forth, but a heck of a lot of other things as a result as my knowledge grew and I began to integrate a lot of systems. Something I would have never thought I could do. I now make triple what I started at 7.5 years ago. When my sister and I were in middle school, my father had an accident at work and became permanently disabled. He ran a million dollar company. My mother, the smartest person in the world had worked her entire career as my father's business partner, mostly running payroll handling the little stuff to keep it all going. So here she was, with a severely handicapped husband and two little girls with no college experience at all. It didn't take long to start drowning in debt. So, she got creative with her resume and landed a job for $15 hour running a completely different type of business. Within 6 months, she asks for a raise to $25, and gets it. Today, she makes over 100 grand a year, and is highly sought after. I feel that employers put way too much stock in the college educated. I didn't put a fake degree or anything like that, but I definitely lied on my resume. I made up fake title positions at jobs I held, saying I was an office manager when I was literally the only person in whole office. Said I had experience using computer programs I hadn't ever used before. Said I was licensed in real estate, even though I hadn't ever even taken the exams for them took the classes. Just never took the test to get licensed, etc. Yesterday was my one year anniversary and my bosses decided to officially promote me to manager. Gave me a raise and then gave me approval to go ahead and hire a PT assistant to help me do my work. So I'd say things are going fairly well. Sometimes your best bet is to just fake it till you make it. I don't know if this quite counts, but due to financial reasons I wasn't able to complete my degree at the prestigious 4 year university I went to. I was 2 terms shy of finishing. I listed on my resume, but I only put the dates I attended and what my majors were. As for how it's working out for me, seems fine. I have a good administrative job at a large national company and when I say I went to my school they sort of just assume I finished. Actually did the same. Nobody has ever questioned it. Came ever so close to graduating high school, within months, but never did. Attended a top 10 school for undergrad and I'm finishing up my PhD. Hey, I work for a company that checks things like education and gets references to check certification, etc. Don't lie about this crap. Compared to conducting other background checks, verifying education is freaking easy. 30 seconds and I can tell that no, you didn't graduate, or you're listing a masters when you have an associates, and so on. It's by far, the most common lie I catch people in is about their education. I know a person who used her sister's college degree on her resume to get a job, worked up the rungs and now is a CEO of the branch. She's quite successful and has a taste for expensive food and alcohol. She made it out fine and nobody other than her family will know. And all of us. 
I went to my college graduation in 2004. Even though I found out right before graduation I was missing one credit, there was a required course that most people take their first semester, about how to write letters and format resumes and whatever, high school stuff. I never took that class and didn't want to pay hundreds in tuition for it but it sounded like I could petition for an upper division writing class I took to count for it, since that class was actually in my major. I got the letter from my professor which was a huge hassle. Filled out a bunch of paperwork and took it to student services and the guy helping me was such a dong bag for some reason. A couple months went by and I didn't hear anything so I went back to student services and they had no record of my petition. I was like a frick it. So now I say I have a BA but technically I don't. No one has ever checked. But sometimes if I'm applying for a job and I think they will check I change my resume to say pursuing a BA at the university of blah blah and I have a sob story ready, that's mostly true. For why I never finished my degree. Universities suck for that. A friend of mine moved around between 3 or 4 schools, and the last one had a required history of Texas class, because yay Texas. That he had to waste an extra semester to take just so he could get the piece of paper from them saying bachelor of whatever. It's working brilliantly. I've been teaching in China for 7 years now and have a higher salary than most of my expat peers here. In the early 2000s, I just graduated community college with a degree in economics with a very low GPA because I sucked at math. I tried applying to banks, mom and pop shops, fast food restaurants. And all of them rejected me. I got desperate so I put in the name of the state college nearby, put a higher GPA on my resume, rented a suit, took my dad's briefcase out to the city and started going door to door to see if they were hiring. A few of them gave me dirty looks, most told me to come back next week but this small credit union asked to see my resume. I gave it to them. They asked me a few questions about my degree and they scheduled me for an interview on the spot. While I was sitting in the waiting room I picked up a newspaper and turned to the finance section. I memorized most of the information there, and when it was time for the interview, they asked me about the story I just read and I told them everything I just read. The guy seemed to be impressed and I got the job. I moved to a major bank a few years later on with the experience I'd gained. I made a lot of money in banking leading up to the financial crisis of 08 but I had saved up a lot of money by then so I bought a few foreclosed houses and supplemented my savings off rent. Whoa, this sounds like a plot to a movie. My brother had been unemployed for several months and was finally able to get an interview for a job abroad. The interview was going great until the employer ended by standing up, going, oh, and you have a driver's license, right? Of course. My brother lied. A few days later he was informed that he got the job. He found out that driving customers around was a big part of the job. So he decides to spend the coming 4 weeks, before he would have to move to this country, getting the license. He literally got it the day before he moved. I've never done this, but I don't see how it can be that bad once you get past the point of being hired. It's supposedly you got hired in preference of at least a few people who got interviewed with a legitimate resume but they picked you so you had to do somewhat good on an interview and have actual skills required for the job. Occasionally they might try to verify accomplishments after being hired but once you're hired how does it even come up again after that? After reading some of this thread now I think faking part of your resume might be required for some jobs as long as it's not too obvious just to get ahead of the competition who might have done it too. I am a faculty member of a university and we have a job posting out for a new chair of the department. We got an application that, it turns out after some simple googling, was completely plagiarized, top to bottom, right down to the authorship of journal articles, which one of my colleagues recognized as papers he'd cited in his doctoral dissertation but had never heard of the person whose application they were attached to. The person himself was real, has a real faculty position at another institution and has tenure there, but the entire application was stolen from blog posts and other academics. Needless to say, we did not offer him the position. Late to the show and not me, but a great uncle. He got a job on a highway construction crew with the blasting crew due to his experience. His experience came from the year before when he and my grandfather stole a box of blasting caps and blew them up. This would have been in the early to mid 1940s. Can you imagine the crap show if you did that today?
Sir, you are encouraging domestic terrorism. S. I almost got in trouble with a previous employer because they thought I'd claimed a degree, when I never mentioned I had one. I mentioned that I went to university for 2 years, but never said what for or listed a degree among my qualifications. It came up in social conversation when I'd been in the position for 18 months and ended up in a minor internal investigation when HR heard about it. Luckily, as the job didn't require a degree, and I had never claimed to have one they didn't do anything. I told a potential employer I was a physically disabled black woman once. Apparently that was enough to jump me to the front of the pile. Diversity unicorn right there. Boy were they surprised when an able-bodied white man showed up to the interview. Actually got the job. 2. Apparently it would have been hiring based on race and gender if they didn't. And that's illegal in Canada. Diversity hiring is racism at its finest. Worked as an anesthesiology assistant. Had no experience in that field but I did previously volunteer at a local dog shelter where we used to put them down. I took a semester off between graduating undergrad and starting grad school cause the husband and I were moving cross country and that just seemed like a whole lot of extra stress that I didn't need to deal with at one time. When we got there, I started looking for a job that I would work for 6 months full time and that would let me do part time afterwards once school started up. That way I could earn a little extra money but not have to work full time and do grad school. So basically retail. I noticed that every place I put my bachelor's degree down didn't call me back but the one place where I accidentally left it off called me back. So I realized that most of the places I was applying to saw me as overqualified and would bail as soon as I found a real job. So I started listing that I was a junior attending the college in town and tailoring the interviews to imply that I was looking for a flexible, part-time gig for just some extra money. Suddenly a million callbacks. I ended up working at a convenience store for 8 months. Worked out great cause my grad program was online, the job had me working nights, and I had a lot of time to read and do homework. Worked in the oil and gas industry and saw loads of guys arrive not having a clue what they were doing and definitely not being qualified for the jobs they were doing. Those were such big jobs that they were able to get away with doing a terrible job and finishing with having 3 stroke 4 years of experience on great pay. Success for them I guess. I worked at a corporate grooming salon. They hired a girl in as a bather and she lasted maybe 2 weeks before being fired for excessively calling off. She later got a job at a moment pop grooming salon. I went to the gym with a couple of times after her being fired and she told me they were going to teach to groom. Fast forward a couple of months and I ended up quitting and got a job at the same mom and pop shop. She no longer worked there but the owner was like oh you're so and so's friend. I no longer talked to her because she moved over an hour away but told the owner yes I knew her. We talked some about it and she was very nicely trying to explain how the girl wasn't a very good groomer and asked me about training at my old store. After a bit of us talking I was pretty much responded with wait what? She only worked as a bather for like 2 weeks. She didn't even finish training. Which was hilarious to me because apparently the girl told the owner she had been grooming for several months and just wasn't comfortable with scissors. She was straight up grooming dogs and sending them home super jacked up until the owner intervened and offered to retrain her. She ended up leaving shortly after that and started her own grooming business. But as far I can tell it's just her FB page and she's gone to a couple of people's house and done nails and baths. The couple of dogs she has shaved look worse in the after pics. I knew how to do like two things in AutoCAD, so I listed it with software I knew. Naturally I was hired for an AutoCAD project and got to learn it in a week. Worked out fine. Lied my butt off to get an interview for a desk job I knew nothing about. Was given a practical to prove I knew what I was doing. It was Excel, which I never touched, and a few pages to fill out. I googled it as I went, passed, and learned Excel on my own in under a month. Easiest job I ever had. 6.30 to 3 o'clock Monday Friday. I was done my work by 9am and literally walked around with a clipboard the rest of the day. People who have worked at convention. Such as Comic Con. Wizard World. Anime Expo. PAX. E3. Etc. What is your most interesting story about it? 
I was a GRT, guest relations team, we get the big names to panels and do other stuff they need, at WonderCon many years ago, one of my big name folks was Robert Kirkman, he was very nice, the usual thing you try to do is take back route if possible, it keeps the fanboy thing to a minimum, this time though we have to cross a convention floor. So we're walking along talking and people know who he is so an occasional person will ask a question or want an autograph. It wasn't too bad. We get almost to the spot and 5 guys in Mandalorian armor come walking up and ask me for my autograph and a picture. So I ask Robert if he minds. He doesn't. So I obliged. We start walking and he asks what was that. I tell him I used to work on a cartoon with a small but very nice and dedicated fan group. He just laughed and asked which one. I told him which and that was the end of it. Later he joked that it was the only time he's had someone escorting him stop to sign an autograph. When I was in high school I worked at the dealer's hall at Fanime Con in downtown San Jose. I worked the entrance of the dealer's hall which meant I checked the badges of everyone entering to make sure they had paid for the event. During one shift this 6 feet 5 inches rotund bald man wearing a backpack came up to me in the middle of a tiring shift and asked if I wanted to be glomped. I had zero idea what that was and I was quite exhausted, but he seemed friendly so I left out a quiet, yes. With almost no effort he swiped me up in a bear hug and just kinda gently swayed me from side to side while humming. He kinda smelled like B.O. But I was 17 at the time and no one had picked me up in several years so it was somewhat calming. I have mixed feelings about the whole thing. Ah the old grab latch on maintain pressure. The 14 year old random sporkweed me knew that well. TLDR. Blizzcon was saved by tape. At Blizzcon last year we kept having entire gaming pods go offline. This happened because excited players accidentally stepped on the power strips under the table. The power strips were dangling under the tables due to a last minute requirement from security that the networking and power equipment not be within visible reach of the players. After the con closed on the first night somebody went out and bought all the gaff tape they could find and a veritable duct tape army of con staff taped all that crap up off the floors under the tables. The resulting tape ball during teardown was awesome. Gaff tape is the duct tape of the entertainment industry. Walk into any theater scene shop and you'll see a wall of different size gaff and colors you didn't know existed. Gaff revolution spread the word. Been selling art at conventions for a number of years. There are way too many stories but I'll try to be brief with some that stick out to me. Vantra speeding through the convention floor on a small scooter with a small mass of people slowly walking after him. As a small Asian girl, a ridiculous amount getting hit on. When I was 14 this large older white dude in his mid 20s kept finding me and talking to me about hentai and his favorite kinds. At one point my friends and I just ran away. Hotel room orgies. Some big name VAs are huge pervs. Taking advantage of their young insecure nerdy fans. Saying really fricked crap to them. Inviting them back to their hotels. Groping them. Friend got hired by Guillermo del Toro after Guillermo del Toro approached his art table. I was sitting outside a convention when a girl came up to me barefoot and holding a kitten and let me pet it. When we asked why she was barefooted, she just said frick shoes and walked away. Atomic lollipop. The whole convention is a fricking shit show. It's basically a convention run by rave kids. They rented out the Ontario Science Center and had Prozac play, a semi-popular Canadian 90s band, but barred pretty much the entire convention from entering. Tickets were also $70 that day. Lots of drugs and booze and underage kids passing out and ambulance and vomit fricking everywhere. This might be the third time they've gotten banned from a venue. Free hug lines. One convention I went to, you had to walk through this parking lot to get to the other side. A line of people were across it forcing free hugs one everyone. Got hugged by a sweaty bare chested Sephiroth. Also I'm really short so I got a face full of the good stuff. People fricking under a blanket in broad daylight in a packed convention. And my favorite. Made friends with some nice random people in line for AX. Then wandered the hotels nearby looking for a party. First was this really awkward party in a hotel lobby, ended within half an hour of us getting there. I searched forums and stuff and took a chance on another party in another hotel. This party was nuts. Everyone was just giving us booze like it was water. Some guy pulls out a huge bag of weed brownies and hands it to us. Another dude rolls up on his skateboard and offers us acid and weed. 
They came card sleeves instead of dime baggies. Another guy has this backpack thing full of some liquid and gives us this speech and he sounded like a drill sergeant giving us a sermon. No idea what he said but I just heard the words coconut and ever clear, and had people get down on their knees and had this hose thing he used to pump down people's throats. Also the liquid was white, and he was shirtless. Later that night I slept like a baby. Apparently my buddy who took the Everclear gist stuff saw the sun rise from the bathroom. You Americans are the best. I've run in the same circles you described for years on the exhibitor side as well. And this post is so true. Also I'm pretty sure I know the person you're referring to in your Guillermo del Toro anecdote. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy either. Spent something like 6 years on staff for Anime Central. Shinichi Watanabe aka Nabushin was a regular guest for ASEN. And he really, really wanted to be con security. They gave him his own security vest and radio and he just had a blast running around the service corridors when he wasn't needed for a panel. There was the time we were breaking down on Sunday evening and over the radio comes up. Where's the pallet jack last I saw if the Power Rangers had it. Last I saw them they were staging a fight on the parking garage roof. There was the time someone was cosplaying as the merchant from Resident Evil 4. But the inside of his trench coat was filled with lacy panties. There was the time one of the hotel restaurants set off the fire alarms and we had to evacuate the entire hotel. That was like 7 years ago and I'm still glad that happened early on Friday morning and not on Saturday afternoon or anything like that. Full stop. The time someone decided to go to the dance wearing a towel. And nothing but a towel. And, so many ambulances. I used to be a regular ass an attendee and my god. With the number of people that had to be carted out of there for medical reasons. I started avoiding the central escalators that opened into the carport. It was nuts. I was standing right there the year the pillows came barreling through with security though. That was pretty cool. I know a guy who is a fairly well known voiceover artist. Somehow his first con. He felt like it wasn't right to charge people to take pictures with him. He's enjoying himself for a couple of days. And security came up and told him he had to charge for pictures. Because Mickey Rooney was there and was pee about him not charging. Making Rooney look bad. So he starts charging $10. He's amazed at all the money he's making. Then security came back and told him that he had to charge at least $20. Because Rooney was complaining again. At the end of the weekend he had a little bag of cash on him. He said he felt like a gangster. I'd have told the convention staffers. Probably not security. By the way. Probably. To go jump in a lake. This is the worst sort of pandering to guests unreasonable demands. I ran a table with my dad at a convention in Atlanta, selling his artwork. I was walking the floor, handing out some advertisements of his artwork website to attract people to the dealer art room, when I suddenly see this mangy dude run through the crowd faster than I'd ever seen anyone run through a con. I stopped to steer, and then, right behind him, this massive dude dressed as the kingpin, Spider-Man, ran around the corner after him. Yelling for him to stop. Right after him came stormtroopers. And then, right after them came security. Never did find out what happened. But I often laugh at the image of all these strange folk running after this guy. My boyfriend's uncle makes a living working at conventions. Running Fernando's engravings. He does hand stamped engraved stainless steel rings in a variety of languages I've gotten really good at listing off after working the stand with him a few times. Old High Gallifreyan and Aurebesh are the newest too. Was really good at awesome con. Since Peter was there, I think the coolest thing I've seen so far is the two three couples who have come up to the stand and ordered their engagement rings from us. It's such a cute, nerdy little thing and I love it 9 stroke 10 times so far. They do long engravings and elvish. Since the whole consonants above vowels thing makes it easier to fit more. Dude, fix your boyfriend's uncle's website. Cool product, but awful awful web presence. Hosted a blood drive at Heroes Con a few years back. Never thought I would draw blood from a twillock or watch a fat Captain America squirm at a needle going in his arm. I always donate blood at Comic Con. They have the best free stuff, and it gives my feet a much needed rest. It depends on what types of interesting stories you're looking for. I've worked at these types of events as an event planner and an exhibitor. So it depends on what angle you're looking for. My spouse is pretty well known comic book artist. Works for the big companies on the big titles. 
so he gets a lot of people coming by to get autographs, pictures, etc. There's always at least 2-3 people per convention who want advice on how to get famous and get furious when he doesn't have a shortcut to offer. He always advises everyone to hone their craft, etc. And no one wants to hear that and start yelling and cussing and basically accusing him of trying to keep them out because he's jealous of their talent, etc. One guy got so belligerent that security stepped in, all because he wouldn't set a meeting with editorial for this random guy to have his portfolio reviewed. Which, BTW, is not something that the artists have any control over. If you're looking for a job in comics, don't badger the artists. I've also seen some dumb stuff that could be considered interesting if you know care who the artists are. Lots of guys sleeping under the tables in their booths because they're too drunk. Fist fights on the convention floor between famous artists. Tons of infidelities. Drunk in public escapades, etc. A recent one that my husband was telling again just the other day was from a convention last year. A woman came up, cradling a baby in her arms. The woman was cosplaying as part of a famous super duo and the baby was dressed as the other half of the duo. My husband worked on the book that the characters were from. So the woman came up to get her book signed and show off her costumes. So we're complimenting the detail, etc. She made them herself, and she turns the baby to show us the front of the costume, the whole time. She's very ginger and whispering and gently rocking the baby in her arms because the baby is asleep and my husband comments on how cute the baby is and the woman starts going on and on and on about how difficult this baby was to have and it was a dream in life to be a mother, etc. And he's thinking this is so sweet. When she finally leaves, she excuses herself to change the baby's diaper and my husband says something to me about how angelic that baby was. So I had to burst his bubble and explain that it was a real baby reborn, which is a type of doll that is painted to look feel realistic. A lot of the women who collect these dolls treat them like real children and sort of live in delusion I've seen a woman on an airplane breastfeeding one of her dolls after demanding that she be given a second seat for the car seat, which she didn't pay for or reserve, and screaming at the flight attendants for upsetting her baby. I feel like things like real baby are a perfect way for people to signal that they are indeed crazy. I was managing social media for a con in Texas that invited a ton of actors from Game of Thrones. My friends and I happened to have way too much beer, so we carried it around and offered some to the talent. Quite a few of the actors accepted, and we got to stand around with them drinking on the con floor on the last day, shooting the crap, and got as many pictures with them as we wanted for free. Because of that, some of them bought us drinks at the hotel bar. Two, once the con finished and everyone was waiting to leave for their flights. I'm so envious of you right now. I have worked a few cons, Magfest, Boston Comic Con, and a few really small regional ones. Mostly in the artist Sally with my friend for both running the booth when she is gone and keeping her entertained. Magfest is my favorite least favorite simultaneously. It is the best as it normally can pull some pretty interesting people and those people are super interesting to see talk to. The worst is a grand majority of the goers are the most unwashed filthy neckbuds I have ever seen and smelled. It has evolved into a bingo card we fill out and the loser has to hoof it to pot bellies for the dinner run. Group of two or more guys both buying daca cases person in cosplay way too good for this con low rent furry mom why did you bring your kids here are some of the spots we put in on our cards. The best story is one I heard on the grapevine from a friend we see each year there. This friend's friend went with her boyfriend to the con and the boyfriend spent pretty much the entire weekend in the conference room set aside for Magic the Gathering. This was probably 2012-ish as it was before they started having bigger tournaments and qualifiers at the convention so it was quarantined to that singular room. Anyway, he spent all weekend in this room. Made constant plans to go to panels with her, or take her to the National Harbor Marina to walk around and get dinner at one of the nice places to eat, or whatever. Each time left her hanging as he stayed in the room playing cards. It eventually came to light that he has also spent $400, his con and food money, entirely on buying packs to open. This I can believe as when I did a walk throughout the room to stretch my legs I saw a 55 gallon trash can filled to the top in wrappers. So he was texting her inconsistently about bumming some money from her so he could pay for the extremely overpriced hotel lobby food so he wouldn't have to actually leave the hotel and could play more. 
She is obviously pretty mad as this was both his idea to come to the con and had already broken promises of I won't ignore you and we will both go do things you want to do see. So she ended up jumping from the room with her boyfriend, breaking up and moving to my friend's room Saturday night, and then Sunday night hooking up at an after party with a VA who had a panel. This VA being the only panel her boyfriend went to and for the specific reason of telling him about it after so that VA is ruined for him. Nerd drama folks. If this had happened at BCC I would have sworn I know the MGH obsessed boyfriend and ticked off ex-girlfriend. I have a friend who was staff at a small regional anime con for a number of years. Apparently two years ago at 4 in the morning Saturday night a staff member went to investigate a crowd that gathered on the stairs between the convention center and the attached hotel. Well, the group disperses once staff shows up, and it turns out two girls and four guys were having a BJ competition. I was presenting a game at E3 a couple years ago and went to man one of our displays to give the girl running demos a break and not 30 seconds after she left the very next person to come over and ask to play was Dante Basco, Rufio. The girl was so salty when she found out. Dante Basco is also known as the guy who voices Prince Zuko in Avatar. Guarding Bruce Campbell's door at E3. I worked for THQ games like 12 or 13 years ago. And at that time we had just announced the first Evil Dead game. So I'm at E3 and get selected for the guard this motherfucking door with your life. If anyone from press gets in, you're fired position. Turns out BC is our booth guest that year and he's behind that door. I'm standing there for probably 10 minutes. Then there's a knock behind me. I made a quick look to make sure one of my co-workers or a press member isn't messing with me. All clear. I ask a nearby co-worker to watch the door. I knock back and tell him it's THQ staff security entering. I open up and there's BC looking at me, lightly jostling his glass and says, Hey buddy, can a guy get some ice around here or what with a big smile on my face? I apologize. Grab his glass and tell him I'll be right back. Knowing I can't leave my post I exit and tell one of my co-workers to please get ice. He gets the ice while I'm waiting outside. A minute later, the ice arrives and I go back in. I told him I'm a big fan. Love the Evil Dead movies and such. Clearly he's heard it a bazillion times by his reaction. Aha, uh -huh, groovy, and goes about his business. A minute passes and he says to me, so when are going to ask me for the picture? Sweet. I asked if it's okay. Obviously he says yes. I get the co-worker who was watching the door to come and so he can take the picture. He in turn gets another co-worker to watch the door for him so he can take the picture. As he is about to take the picture, BC says, Okay, doing Elvis in 3, 2, 1 inches and all my dumb butt can come up with is this. Have to post the Inga link later, but it's a dumb smile and my shoulders hunched forward. BC pats me on the back. I shake his hand and tell him to knock if he needs anything at all. I leave, close the door, and there's my team led looking pee off because I, assumingly, asked BC for a picture, and why I had to take two staff members from their posts. He wasn't happy, but frick it, I got a pick with the man. His personality was totally polite but slightly stuffy because, well crap, because he's fricking Bruce Campbell. I think he was just fun with it all, the coolest guy I've ever met. I'm a big fan of his soup. As security working these events, the amount of people who bring in weapons, real ones, no sir, you can't paint the tip of a real firearm orange, no sir, it doesn't matter if it isn't loaded, no sir, I can't allow you re-entry. Here in the UK, they stop you bringing in sticks, then let you buy swords, knives, and crossbows inside. I was bartending in Indianapolis during Gen Con. Back in 2011, I was walking downtown before a shift, and popped over to the liquor store on Pennsylvania. A group of madrigal performers bards, I assume that's the correct term, were making their way over to Scotty's brew house to have a bite, instruments in hand, and I saw one of the scraggly dudes who hits people up for change walking briskly in their direction. I sped up, cause I was worried he was gonna make a run on these poor guys. When he got close, he yelled, at the top of his lungs, hey pirate mans, y'all know P got you hooked and started doing a little two step in front of them, they were completely confused, I've never laughed so much in my life, probably just best to say bards or some such, madrigals, traditionally, are usually a cappella. 
I've worked Boston Comic Con and PAX East, my favorite thing about them was seeing all the parents and kids equally as excited to be there. It always warmed my heart to see families bonding with something like this. When my friends or I play con bingo at BCC we have squares for kid having best day his her of life and parent having best day of his her life. We had a booth in 2004 San Diego and none other than King RR Martin shared our space. He wasn't so famous then. I jumped over our booth table to punch my friend in the balls, don't ask, and scared the bejeebies out of RR. Pixel didn't happen. Disclaimer. I know nothing about con so maybe this is only odd to me but I found this fascinating. My brother was performing subcontract building maintenance at a furry con. Got to talking with an artist there, drawing painting. Asked him what he draws and the response was dragon pee. I didn't know that was a thing. Should have asked if he collected expensive blow up giant dragons. It's called Game of Thrones now. I was doing photo blog of 2015 D23 Expo in Anaheim. I first hand witnessed a cosplay duo have it out in middle of a busy walkway. Their argument started when the guy noticed that the girl was looking at a Flynn Rider cosplayer a little too long. He just lost it and started yelling at her at all the random outfit work he had to do for this evening and that she should just go f the Flynn Rider cosplayer. She began to hysterically cry and fell to the ground. I can't for the life of me remember who they cosplayed as. I should have taken a photo but was just as shocked by the whole thing. At PAX last year, this kid came up to me saying he lost his 2DS on Friday, first day. He came back every day and we looked every day, until it showed up in our booth 2 hours before the show floor closed on Monday. The look on the kid's face was priceless. Not that interesting crazy, just made me really happy. Ran audio for Comic Con in Seattle. Christopher Lloyd hugged me for giving him his mic. Michael Rooker asked me if he smelled like weed before he went on stage. I told him he smelled like a fresh smoked joint. He grinned at me then tried to practice his martial arts on me. None can get close to Patrick Stewart. 10 stroke 10 would do it again. I worked at a comic con this year doing promo for a game on Kickstarter. I got paid pretty well to walk around in a costume the creators of this game made while getting pictures taken telling people about the game. Out chasers. I was dressed as Heksha. In full body paint. Wig. Scleris everything. Anyway, I probably have more interesting stories than this, but the only one that really stuck with me was the dip in dots guy. I was on the second floor walking around in the showcasing area, headed towards this exit when a man, an African American in maybe his early 30s, loudly starts talking to his group. Dude, I really hope they have dip in dots. I could really go for some dots right now. Hey, do you think they have dip in dots here? They better. I'm craving some dots. I'm trying not to laugh as I'm just right behind this guy. And right as we get out the doors, lo and behold, there's a little dip in dots car just on the right of the exit outside. The guy sees this, fist pumps the air excitedly, and exclaims, Oi ye dip in dots. TL. DR. Man hopes for dip in dots, gets his dots in the end. My friend did the artwork on a game, Pixel Sprites, and worked at a boot for a bunker sim kinda game last PAX. Apparently a guy that worked for the Fallout Shelter game came by and my friend was very nervous since their game had a similar theme even if the game was totally not the same. But the dude complimented them on the game, calling it a Fallout Shelter on steroid. Best compliment ever. I was a volunteer at Calgary Fan Expo this year which was held the first weekend of May and it was hot as frick out. Stan Lee was showing up for his final convention in Canada so a lot of people were expected to turn out. Sure enough, it was the busiest the annual convention had ever been. It wasn't super interesting, except for one occurrence. The convention officially began Thursday, but Friday was when everyone started showing up so it was packed. I was checking tickets at the entrance. Pretty boring. After about 2 hours of non-stop ticket checking I decided to take a break at about noon to grab something to eat. Some woman and her 3 kids, who should have been in school but I digress, yelled at me for leaving when they were next in line. I explained someone else would help them in a few seconds but she wasn't having it and storms past the gate. Two security guards confront her asking for her tickets. She's the type of person who is never told no and when she said she didn't have her tickets but was meeting a friend inside, 
was quite shocked to learn she would not be allowed to attend the convention. I grabbed my bag of chips from my lunch bag and watch. This is gonna be good. She's throwing a fit while her three kids, all of whom were probably in the 6-10 age range, all had the look of not this crap again, mom on their face. Someone else takes my spot and the line continues. She freaks out, asking why they're allowed in and she's not. The guard explains so simply that pretty much anyone with a basic understanding of how the world works would understand. They have tickets. You don't yet she had the look on her face like they just told her some complicated math formula. The other guard chimes in mom. You're gonna have to leave or we will contact the police. Needless to say, she went berserk. Started screaming. Called the guard sexist pricks. Threw her bottle of Pepsi at me and was causing a big scene. Her smallest child burst into tears while the other two comforted their crying sibling while her mom was seconds away from punching out this hulking 6 feet 6 inches security guard who I later learned was a pretty dang good boxer back in his heyday. Nothing will calm this woman down. Not her upset children. Not two huge security guards. Not a crowd of well over a thousand people giving her a weird look and not even the very real possibility of her being arrested. All because she didn't follow the basic rule of you have to pay to get in. Well, there was one thing that could calm her down. Who else to show up but Nolan freaking North to basically tell her to shut the frick up. It was glorious. Her face turned bright red, but she just huffed heavily. Pretty much yanked her kids, gave one final frick you buttholes to me and the security guards and left. TL. DR. Fat B doesn't pay, Nolan North tells her to frick off. I've worked much smaller conventions, usually held in hotels. In the past these conventions would manage to book the entire hotel but these smaller cons are not as popular as they once were. The artist go was Kit Ray, a fantasy artist whose work tended toward the erotic. The chairwoman decided to make a costume based on one of his drawings, and this outfit consisted primarily of half inch wide leather straps. Technically everything that had to be covered was, but for all intents and purposes she was wearing two band-aids and a cork. Unfortunately as the con didn't book the whole hotel we were double booked with a bunch of football fans from some of the college bowl games. These sports fans were being incredibly rude to the sci-fi fans. When the chairwoman was walking around the open grounds of the hotel she wore a cloak to avoid angering the hotel management. But on three different occasions when the fans were being unruly she dropped the cloak. And in each of those three occasions a wife or girlfriend slapped her husband's or boyfriend's face for staring. This was exactly her goal and it worked beautifully. I worked a con in Dallas, Texas around 2001 or 2002. In front of our booth, two people, one dressed as a starfish, I believe a Pokemon, and another a classic furry fox, began to finger blast each other for about 5 minutes before security hauled them out. Talk about surf and turf. That same convention, an old lady staying at the hotel who wasn't associated with the convention claimed she was jumped by three men dressed as ninjas while in the elevator. The ninjas were never found, the mark of well-trained assassins. After the move to the Anatole, the following incidents have occurred. 1. Someone had some LSD at the rave. It managed to find its way into the hotel's koi pond. 2. There was a girl who had too much molly at the rave. They used to have an elephant statue with long tusks. Those tusks aren't long anymore because of what the girl did to him while on molly. What happened at your job that felt like an unused script for the office? My father left his old job because they created the committee committee. They kept needing committees for things, and kept having to decide who would be on them. So they created a committee whose sole purpose was to select the members of other committees. Ah yes, the Havelock itinerary approach to management. I once farted at work, and my cubicle is by the kitchen. My manager walks by my cubicle and says, Um, what is that smell? It smells like someone is warming up their dinner from last night. I could not stop laughing in my mind after he said that. Well he isn't wrong. I worked in large office, and the president of the company rode around on a freaking segway. I remember attending a meeting once, and he segwayed in, stood on the freaking thing to deliver his presentation and then segwayed out of the room like he was riding a goddamn roman chariot. That would have been hilarious to watch. I work for a smaller non-profit. Boss sends us an email about limiting use on the color copier. 
BC we need to save money and the color toners are expensive. Fine. I only print in BNW most of the time. Next day, she calls me down to help troubleshoot her wireless connection to the printer. 1. Turns out the connection has always been fine, but what she actually needs is help formatting a document before it gets printed. That document is Harry Potter themed birthday invites in a deep scarlet and gold color scheme for her daughter's upcoming birthday party too. She then proceeds to test print the invites 10 times before actually printing the 35 sheets that she really needed. This was a year ago. I'm still going out of my way to print full color copies. Uh, this is one of those posts where I get so upset reading it that I first downvote out of disgust before remembering that you didn't do this. HR held a seminar on diversity in the workplace. HR rep proceeded to ask what we like for Thanksgiving. We all answered with things like turkey, stuffing etc. The one black guy answers turkey as well. The HR rep then stopped the meeting, pointed at him and said you know in my experience with the African American community, you all typically like macaroni. She lost her job a few days later. All true. No lies. Years ago delivering pizza my boss was a huge man baby and was upset with me about something stupid. I was up for a double delivery which was more rare than you'd think and I would get an extra dollar for the same trip out of the store. So to punish me he only gave me one and gave the other to the next driver up. Well, the deliveries weren't just close, they were to the same exact place. For some reason the customer just made two orders. Maybe to use two different cards, otherwise they would have just updated the order. We even told my boss as we were taking the order but he didn't care. He already made up his mind about this stupid punishment even though you could tell he was realizing how dumb it was. So here we are. Two delivery dudes from the same place delivering to the same place. And the customer actually says dang I specifically asked them not to send two people. As though that wouldn't be totally obvious and he still got two people. That last line sounds like they ordered 10 minutes apart after forgetting something and were worried they'd send someone on two trips as the separate parts were ready. Last year on ugly Christmas sweater day, co-worker A did not have a sweater to wear. Co-worker B offered to loan one to her. The day of, A arrived wearing a Christmas sweater. B remarked to A that, having found an ugly sweater to wear, she would no longer need to borrow one. At which point co-worker A broke into tears and exclaimed, My mom knitted this sweater for me HR got involved. Hilarious. Huh, I don't think that's something to cry about. Most homemade sweaters kind of end up delightfully tacky, unless her mother passed or something. My boss was obviously sleeping with my co-worker. He referred to his new girlfriend as his dream woman and described her exactly, but wouldn't tell me her name. It was so awkwardly painfully obvious who he was talking about, but after I easily guessed that it was her, his eyes went huge and he sat there for a moment in slack-jawed panic. Then he blurted out no, it's not her, I hate her. A few days later he comes into my office and says, Okay, listen, I know you want to know the name of my dream woman. He invented the name Barb for her, and told me all about how he's so excited that she's introducing him to her friends, and it feels like they're a real couple. Except every time he meant to say Barb he actually accidentally said my co-worker's name instead. Each time I corrected him, he said, right, not her, I meant Barb. After he told me the stories about G, I mean Barb, he walked out of the office with a devilish half smile expression, like he was pretty sure he fooled me and got away with it. Naturally, you now refer to that co-worker as Barb. Boss, coming in from a walk to the Target a few stores over in the shopping center. Guess what I found all the way over in the parking lot at Target? My dumbass co-worker. Was it a rat? Boss, number. Co-worker. Was it a dead rat? Boss, it wasn't a rat. It was one of our shopping carts. But that part doesn't matter. Just the fact that she thought it still could have been a rat after he said no the first time and thought the clarification dead would be the right guess was really funny to me. I can definitely hear that in Dwight's voice. The sales manager pulled a real white. I guess to save money and prove that nobody would know the difference. He cancelled bottled water deliveries and started refilling them secretly with tap water. People noticed immediately, and it was stupid anyway because the company was doing well at the time. Whatever savings were irrelevant. This happened at my office too. Owner's wife was outside filling the water cooler jug with a hose. My boss had a dream. 
When she describes it, it sounded more like a nightmare but she didn't see it that way. She described this dream of being locked in a room with only a single door. At one point some big men in suits opened the door and without saying a word threw a gutted pig into the room and closed the door. She came to work, told us about this dream, and then asked for a few co-workers to help her google what it meant. When they looked it up and broke down the different symbols in it, frick my life, they came to the conclusion that it wasn't good. Who would have guessed, right? Boss didn't like their assessment so she started arguing about the different ways you could interpret a dead pig being thrown at you by mafia types. Ma Someone was going to bring her the bacon. My co-workers and I are currently in a large office style feud. We're broken up into teams at my company and we are all pretty loyal to our teams and heavily differ personality wise per team. Our office is about a month away from major renovations. Desks are moving. Spaces are shifting. It's a huge all out war for desk spaces that have turned into heated arguments. We all separate and talk crap about opposing teams in meetings. It's been a lot of fun. Mega desk. Had a woman when I first started at my company who had all sorts of TMI moments. But my favorite was the day she accidentally crap her pants. Instead of discreetly going to clean herself up and returning to her desk. Or taking care of it on lunch or whatever a better solution would have been. She went to the bathroom, placed her soiled underwear in a bag, and casually walked out of the office stopping by every single desk letting us know she had an accident and was going home to get new underwear. Like she was proud of her chocolate trophy or something. It was bizarre. She quit a week later because God told her to. Definitely Meredith. In the same day I was both commended and reprimanded for the same thing certificate and everything i had been helping out around the office with jobs people didn't want to do and helping cover different departments when our business was experiencing a tough year with employee illnesses an hour after getting the certificate from the department director and seer my boss pulls me and says i'm not pulling my weight and need to stop being so nice to other people i didn't even know how to respond and he couldn't figure out how to explain what i actually did wrong weird day Sounds like your boss may have been feeling a little threatened by the attention you were getting from the big guys. Our bookkeeper used lol at the end of text messages to the general manager. He thought it meant lots of love so she was let go because he thought she was coming on to him. Barak in the day lol was used for that as well or so I have seen in a couple of comments on a thread where people said things about how the internet was before. A crazy nurse trapped a young, new employee in the nurse's station and proceeded to spend an hour driving the new employee through the nurse's hometown on Google Maps, small boring Canadian suburb, exclaiming things like this is where my friend lived and this is where the hospital was, only 15 minute from my house while new employee made help eyes at me from the office, feels like it could have been Michael and Ryan when he was a temp. This makes me sad. Hippie co-worker went to spend the summer in the woods out west with no cell phone. Me. What if there's an emergency? What if there's a bear? Him. Well, that's a noble way to go out of this life. I can't figure out if he's creed or white. My office is preparing to let some work from home. But they're going to require a webcam. Which will be used to ensure that address code is being followed while working. From home. I found out today, and it's honestly got me a little depressed, that I'm associated with people that think like this feels like some tremendous personal failing. That's honestly fine with me, if I were allowed to wfh 3 days a week but had to have a webcam, heck yeah, I commute 115 each way if I am lucky, houses within 45 minutes are 700k plus. I had a boss at a local TV studio that got the job because his father used to be the boss. He had zero qualifications but acted like he could do no wrong. One time he chewed me out for losing a battery off of one of the cameras. We were standing in front of his office and I waited for him to finish his rather long winded speech about negligence, the cost of replacing a battery and how he never would have let this happen if he'd been in charge of the batteries. After he finished, I pointed at the battery sitting in the middle of his desk and told him I think I found the battery. I have never seen a man more red faced. Should have asked for a raise or something. That's some dang good employee work. There's been a war over keeping our water cooler or not between our CTO and our CSR manager for over a year. As the guy who sits beside it, 
there's nothing more fun than listening to the CTO claim they are supporting a small, family-run bottling company, the water comes from a major brand, and how the recycle jugs along with the jobs provided by us using the water support the economy. Counter-arguments are that we have a filtered water dispenser not 10 feet from the water cooler, the waste in plastics used for the jugs, the CO2 equivalent emissions from the delivery truck, etc. Really the CTO just likes the taste better and prefers the two temperatures, an almost ice cold and a perfect sipping hot. The CSR manager is slowly winning by reducing the order of water we make every couple of weeks. Their banter is incredible though, and I love that we have microwavable popcorn in the office for these occasions. Ginger, get the popcorn. When I worked a sort of telemarketing job, I sat next to this guy who really didn't seem to grasp the concept of the job at all. I'd sometimes overhear him while I was waiting for someone to pick up and he was just a mess, tripping over his words constantly. Once, I glanced over at his screen and saw he had been on one call for over 40 minutes. I frantically nudged him and he muted it, asking what was up. I told him if he didn't ask for money soon and end the call he might get fired, or at least reprimanded again. His response, oh, but he's pretty fun to talk to. He already told me he doesn't want to donate like a long time ago. It was basically just like Michael Scott totally failing at his own telemarketing job. Michael Scott is an excellent salesman though. I worked retail and moved stores. A few months later my female Michael Scott boss was also moved to my store. Everyone was asking me what she was like and what to expect and all I could say was you just have to wait and see for yourself. Everyone was so excited to meet her on her first day they all showed up early to greet her and she was about 45 minutes late. Walks into the store and the first thing she says is sorry I'm late. I had to wait for my husband to get up to do my hemorrhoid cream before I left. Boss literally bought a PS4 for a white elephant exchange. Exactly as much of a disaster as that episode with the iPod. There's always that one person that ruins the fun of a white elephant party by bringing something good. My former boss decided that since she was leaving, she would throw a going away party for herself. Usually, close friends or workmates will put together a nice get together to send them off. She had managed to pee off nearly everyone she worked with at one time or another except for the head of the organization, so she provides the list of people she wants invited, as well as people she wanted not to attend, where and when and decides a theme. The theme was pet speed dating, it was some sort of inside joke she had suggested and had decided that this would be the theme. I met a few of the people besides workmates at the party, it was a few members of the public that were very active on the organization's email list who had no real lives except to say they were very interested in getting crap for free. It was an odd mix of people in an uncomfortable setting at an event that was exceptionally weird to honor a person nobody really liked or felt any warmth. Odd all around. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what the heck pet speed dating is, or what it would look like as a 3 meta a party. Muffins are provided at staff meetings. The big kind with chocolate chips and those waxy wrappers. Sort of weird dude I work with starts eating his, finishes, then folds the wrapper into a triangle, stuffs it in his mouth, chews and swallows, like it is just the most natural thing in the world, I didn't believe my eyes, but then I locked eyes with someone from another department and the look of pure confusion shock on his face told me that he too had witnessed it, by the next meeting, a small group of non-believers were on the lookout with the two of us, and sure enough, Strange co-worker does it again, by the meeting after next, basically the entire staff was watching this guy eat his muffin. I am fearful that management will notice, and will stop providing the muffins because at this point no one is that room is paying attention to a dang thing they say. We all just watch the weird guy enjoy his muffin, and wait to see him eat the wrapper. I really used to hate meetings, but this has made them much more enjoyable. It's just so odd. They act as little parachutes for his poops so they don't splash in the toilet water. I'm a UPS package handler, RIP me, as if two weeks ago and during training, we had a conversation that went like this. Trainer, okay guys here's your workbooks, please open to page 13 and put today's date. Today we're gonna talk about hazmat packages. Again, page 13 and write today's date. Employee, what date should we write down? My trainer literally gave the most done face and looked off into an imaginary camera. 
Big Boss scheduled an optional meeting to discuss results of a work survey. No one showed up as it it was a very busy time of year and we had an intense schedule. So he sat alone in the meeting room for a few minutes, came out, and announced he would hold the meeting out in the office. Regularly stopped talking to tell people trying to work to stop and listen as this was important. The big survey result. People felt they didn't have enough time to get work done. No one got their work done on time that day. My boss started calling people hoses out of nowhere. It seems like she's doing it to be cool. She's a 60 year old fairly uptight lady and is pretty far from cool and she won't stop. One day, get her in private and convince her that the word hoser is a derogatory term in 2017. During a major presentation, an odd noise started coming in from the speakers. It seemed like one of the people who called in left his mic on. At first I thought he was shifting in his chair, but as the noises became more rhythmic and frequent and louder, it was clear the dude was snoring. There was at least 50 people in attendance for this presentation who got to listen to this. I really thought this was going to take a different barrecrian. I work at a large chain retailer as a front of store supervisor. One day, one of my cashiers clocks in, comes to me and says, So, my last day was last week, but I am still on the schedule. Sure enough, there she was. Shoot, well, did you out in your two weeks? It's slow. Go talk to HR in the office and figure this out. No, I mean... I was let go last week, I was fired, but they scheduled me, uh, okay, do you still want to talk to HR, A, as long as I am getting paid, I like this job, I'll just have fun today, what are they going to do, fire me, that was the day I found out the true limits of the poses discount button, at microcenter, we had to get a manager to type in a code in order to change the prices on anything, I guess now I know why. I was a legal intern this summer for a mid-sized city. My desk was situated in front of a bulletin board with job postings for the city, and when a posting needed to go up, I would put it up since it was closest to my desk. One day the officer manager gives me one to hang up, so I do. A few hours later, she approaches me with another posting, and says it's the same posting but there was an error on the old one, so hang the new one up. She goes back to her desk with the old one and goes, oh. My. God. So she comes back over and point out that in the requirements for job section. Someone put. Must be able to handle snarky comments from strangers who don't know you at all but enter the lobby with an attitude just because you represent government. So she shows my boss this. Who was the city lawyer. And she has a fit. She called HR and the head of HR came down to our office and they held a meeting about it. So. I've spent a ton of time at this job goofing around. And by this point I know the city website pretty well. I knew the city also posted job openings online, which the public can see. So I went to the city's job page, and sure enough, the posting is there, comment and all. At this point, I'm dying because I think it's funny. So I go into my boss's office, and let them know it's on the city website. HR boss freaks out and tells me to call IT and have them get rid of it. It was a fun day. Ha ha ha. But really that was the main requirement for our receptionist when I was a prosecutor. I'm a Starbucks barista, and I was on drive through for our usual after school rush. So my shift supervisor was in charge of getting all the food orders together at the time, and someone at the window ordered a cookie. Me, trying to get the line moving and not bothering to make sure, take the pastry bag she handed me, with the cookie sticker on it, and give it out to the lady at the window, and she drives off. Five minutes later, the same lady pulls up to the speaker and says, Hey, I just came through and ordered a chocolate chip cookie but I got a bag with two strips of bacon in it. For clarification, we don't even serve straight up bacon. My shift supervisor had taken some bacon from one of the sandwiches and warmed it up for herself, then switched it with a cookie somehow. Honestly I'd just take this as a win and keep the bacon. An employee known for slacking was hanging out in the lobby, and the boss came by, asking her if she had anything to do. The employee replied something along the lines of how boss should mind her own business, and who was she to be asking questions. Meanwhile, the boss portrait hung on the wall in the lobby, on the wall directly in front of the seating area. Employee wasn't seen around much after that. 
A guy being called into HR because he continually had his pants around his ankles at the urinal. Everyone would talk about it for weeks. Then finally someone reported it. In elementary school there was always that one kid that did that. They usually got held back a year. Probably the time my boss asked us to hang up a picture of our city's archbishop in order to woo a client. Like he was watching us and blessing us while we did our work. I crossed my arms and said, I am not going to be part of this farce. All the day we were taking pictures for our website and the president stood over our shoulders helping us for the pictures. That man didn't know crap about what we did. A previous office manager at my work used to throw little balls of garbage. Candy wrappers typically, at me. One time he accidentally spit on me as well and laughed about it. The man legitimately looked up to Michael Scott. And even though the above pee me off at the time, he had a great heart and cared about his staff's happiness above all else. I was a manager of a small administrative department for a well-known national bank. One day my manager over me informed me the bank was laying off several people company-wide. He told me one position from among my staff of three would have to be laid off and he needed that name to him by the end of the day. The three women working for my department really liked their jobs and were worried about their jobs. I had to submit a name of one of my three employees to my boss by the end of the day. After making a quick phone call to my wife I wrote a name on a piece of paper and strolled into my boss's office and handed it to him. He read it. I wish I had a picture of his face. His jaw literally dropped. It was my name. Been decades later. No regrets. That sounds like a season finale. It helps that I literally work at a business to business office supply company that specializes in selling paper. My bosses are a little bit disconnected from reality. This one time we were having a sales wide Skype conversation and somebody posted a picture of a bunch of gangster rappers. Everyone started joking around about who would be who if that was a photo of us. Boss, middle aged Asian man, chimes in, zooms in on one of their faces and said that one is me, with the gangster lips. Q muffled laughter from the entire office. Q, come on. I used to work in customer service at Young Living. At the end of the year Gary Young, the founder of YL, came to give a speech to everyone. This was a couple of weeks before the presidential election and he proceeded to tell everyone to vote for Trump. The same day everyone received an email saying that what was said in his speech should not be shared with others outside of work or we could be fired. Worked for an IT department. We were designing an order system for franchisees to be able to place orders to us. Corporate. For specific supplies via a simple B2B internet site. Customer service and order entry didn't want to learn the new system. They decided that when a new order notification came in, we, the IT department would have to log in and print out the order and fax it to their department. In the same building. I kid you not. And no one higher up insisted they do their jobs and learn the new system. We used a lot of fax paper that year. Worked at Enterprise back in the day with a deaf man who would rap in sign language and was very aggressive about it I would always just wait for Jim to give me that look into the camera like WTF. By no means am I making fun of deaf people I love all kinds happy holidays. You kid but he'll be the one laughing when he gets signed to. Def Jam. I helped a co-worker who kept getting an error message whenever she tried to print something. The error said load paper because the printer was out of paper. She praised my IT skills. Tried to throw a paper wad into the trash bin. Missed, walked over to pick it up. Bent over and my tie got caught in the shredder. So you're the reason that those stickers are there. Worked in a call center for a couple months. Guy beside me who was trying to sell our product package to a female customer but couldn't close the sale. Somehow or another he found out she was a Christian so he downloaded the Bible app on his phone during the call and started quoting scripture. Five minutes later he signed her up for our most expensive package. This probably isn't Dunder Mifflin worthy but it's definitely sitcom worthy. Worked AV with an awesome crew. In our storage room we had a little Nerf basketball hoop set up. One day we somehow got into a 3 stroke 3 game in the storeroom. All of us down to undershirts and sweating bullets. We were all very competitive. Manager walks in and we all stop and just stare at him with the oh crap. What now feeling. He just shook his head turned around and walked out. A group of 4 of my friends. 
Seniors in high school at the time, do landscaping work for a big factory. All of our equipment is in a shed in a spot where our boss or other workers don't go very often. So sometimes we take breaks inside the shed. Well it's been a running joke that there's about a 90% chance that at any given moment there is someone hiding in the shed. So every time someone walks by they knock loudly on the door. One of the dumber people of the group thought it would be funny to knock on the door with the lawnmower since it was the end of the day. Well the idiot on the lawnmower didn't realize how fragile the shed door was apparently and backed up too much and ripped the door off the hinges. To find his three co-workers all sitting in the shed with the most terrified look on their faces. We then took about an hour of overtime to fully repair the door before the next workday. Which job is a lot less fun than most people expect? Oh my gosh. Build a bear. Weirdest and most frustrating thing. Granted I didn't make it a super long time in the job and seeing kids so happy is great. But they are really strict and the bad times get pretty bad. I imagine that store is just parents with sticker shock trying to talk their kids into cheaper options. You go in to do the little $35 bear, and walk out $150 later with a bear in a full tuxedo with a skateboard and a construction helmet. I'm a forensic scientist and it's literally the only thing people ask me about on dating apps. It's very technical work and it's extremely routine. I'm an archaeologist and I imagine we have very similar conversations. Usually when I meet people I avoid the topic at this point because the pressure is on me to drive the energy of the conversation with the exciting 3% of what I do while avoiding too many technical terms. It's kind of deflating to see how quickly people go from 100 to 0 interest because of my explanation. Professional photographer. Not like, hobbyist, but business owning photographer. Sucks the love right out of your work. Because you started the business to take pictures. Then Karen doesn't like the way she looks in one of them so she wants the whole set for free plus a reshoot for free plus those images for free. But then the two high school kids getting into a very ill-advised marriage at exactly 18 years old wants to book you for their wedding but their budget is only $50. Then Karen calls back because she loves your work and wants to pay for another shoot. But only if you agree to do her friend's daughter's destination wedding for free. Then you get a call from your last bride. It's been two weeks since their wedding. Where the frick are her pictures? Then you get no leads from a bridal expo. Then a client finds out you don't support their candidate and tries to take you to court to get her money back. Then some insta thought who thinks she's influencing people offers a collab where you take pro photos of her and she adds crappy insta filters to it and claims her friend took them. And she's not gonna pay. And then you get some entitled mom who wants you to photograph every day of her newborn's first year of life for $100. I went back to being a hobbyist. Barnes and Noble. Your job has literally nothing to do with books and it obviously attracts a lot of that type. Myself included. My younger sister worked in the cafe for a long time. She said it was really frustrating. Especially since they sold Starbucks coffee but weren't an actual Starbucks store so people would complain about not taking their gift loyalty cards or minor variations in the drink or pastry menu. That and making espresso drinks for people's 5 year olds just felt really slimy. Park Ranger. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. But a lot of days it was less talk about cool animals while wearing your ranger hat and more the toilets are overflowing again. Go clean the septic tank filter and stir the tank with a shovel. With a little bit of hay there's a methed out guy down by the bridge. Can you convince him to leave without killing anyone? All for the low price of $26k year with a college degree. This makes me kinda sad. One of those jobs I've always wanted and was thinking of pursuing when I leave the military. I do closed captioning. While I joke that yes, I get paid to watch TV, it's actually very tedious. And if you don't actually enjoy the programming you're being forced to watch something you don't care for. Or worse, if it's something I do enjoy like a long form drama, we usually chop those up into 15 minute increments and split between everyone so I only see chunks and not always even in order it actually ruins the show for me. I can imagine it's tedious. My partner corrects YouTube videos sometimes and that takes so long. As a deaf person, I really appreciate captions, so thank you for doing what you do. Working in a flower shop. It's just like any other retail job, but people constantly tell you how fun your job must be. Also helping grieving families chose funeral flowers is not fun. 
for sure. Dealing with brides, dealing with their mothers, funerals, sitting in traffic making deliveries, waking up super early to get to the flower market, and so 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 much bleach. While I'm a scientist, I don't know if people usually think of that career as fun, but I think people think it's a lot more eureka and a lot less this data has to be manually processed for 600 hours before I can analyze it. Not a specific job but traveling for work. I'm in tech and a lot of people starting out talk about wanting to go to customer sites and get out in the field. I love to travel for fun but it's hard to fit in the fun stuff when you have presentations and stuff to worry about and a lot of times your customers aren't in the fun cities anyway. I also think I prefer the stability and day to day schedule of traveling less frequently. A pediatric nurse. Being a nurse for children and adolescents. Everyone in nursing school talks about how much they want to work with kids. The reality is that a pediatric nurse sees more cases of abuse and neglect than any other specialty. It doesn't matter where you are in a pediatric hospital. It's the thing you see most. I've seen so many DCS, Department of Child Services, case workers that I've gotten to know some of them and became acquaintances with them. Sure working with children and adolescents is great. But people don't think about the most essential piece of that puzzle which is their families. It doesn't matter how good of care you give to those kids, if you don't loop the parents into that care you may as well just not be doing anything for them. I feel you. I work in pediatrics. I'm one step away from oncology. So I know more about cancer than I'd ever like to know. It can be soul crushing at times. Although not necessarily bad. Beekeeping. Get used to the constant sound of buzzing during hive inspection swarm removals plus wearing the protective suit in hot butt weather for hours on end. Give or take the situation. Also, there appears to be a large number of beekeepers allergic to bees so epipens are a must. Demolition. Everyone wants to break crap with a sledgehammer. Everyone is tired of lifting that sledgehammer by 5 swings. Nobody wants to load the broken stuff into bags or a wheelbarrow and take it to the dumpster. I did a 2 week demo job years ago where I had to jackhammer, 75 lbs at least, a concrete slab and grind rebar into pieces. I'm in good shape and that job fricked me up. Video game testing. I've been working in the game industry for 6 years now, and teaching for 2. Testing video games is thought to be just oh you just play games all day, lololololol but it's actually very specific and arduous. First of all, there are a bunch of testing methodologies such as load soak testing, white room testing, version testing to name a few, but the most common one is functionality testing. Functionality testing is so if I walk into that corner with the shotgun in my inventory, I can clip through the wall, but if I have my M16 in my inventory, I don't clip through. Paleontologist. You don't get to work with full dinosaur skeletons and do all kinds of awesome expeditions. You're mostly sitting at a desk looking at some pictures and logging stuff on your computer. Maybe examining a fossil occasionally. If you're lucky you can go on a real dig. And omg spend hours in the hot sun dusting off rocks. That actually sounds pretty fun. It basically sounds like school with some extra steps. Working in an animal shelter. For sure. It's probably less intense than zookeeping, but the amount of people who apply or volunteer expecting to come in and play with cute puppies all day is absurd. We're basically animal maids. You deal with animals of all sorts of behavioral and developmental stages crapping and pee every freaking where and then you look over and this freaking dog named Chumbo Humba swimming in his water bowl so you gotta fill that up 6 times and dry his kennel out and then you go and mop up the cat room around 10 kittens who want to eat your mop and also 4 children who are all yelling that there's puke in the floor and I must clean it. Now, not to mention all the extra behind the scenes work that the public never sees. How in the summer, during kitten and puppy season, the shelter built a house 500 max has 750 and I didn't take a lunch or sit at all for any of my shifts for the past 6 days. How the courts force us to put down animals that we know can be rehabilitated, but we don't get enough funding to fight it. How animal control just showed up with the fourth pregnant stray of the week but intake is full and even double stacked in some cases, so your co-worker fosters the cats on her own. Not even to mention the crappy freaking people who do dumb crap and end up getting bit or scratched and the animal is the one who bears those consequences. I am the proudest shelter worker in the world. I adore my job. 
Even at its hardest, I didn't sit for 9 and a half hours today and I found a cat turd in the cuff of my jeans but it doesn't matter because a bonded pair of adult cats got adopted today. I took 6 applications this morning and the cat in bank 4 with the goopy eyes already looking better. And we sent a mammal out to foster. The hard work is always worth it for these babies. I want to hear more about Chumbawamba. Acting. All the ones we see on TV and movies are the 0.0001% of incredibly lucky and talented people who managed to thrive in a hostile and overcrowded industry. And even when you are working, the actual job itself is 99% sitting on apple crate in hot makeup waiting for some grips to move a lighting fixture. Then you say 3 lines over and over again for an hour, and then you rap. That was my experience as an extra. I waited all day for something to do and was given a role as a doorman but neglected to tell me anything else. Luckily I thought to open the door and it made it on screen but that was it. Being an extra in a movie, now, it can be super fun. I especially love historical and post-apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy type stuff. But a typical day on set wasn't what I thought it'd be when I started doing it. Often we have to get up at 3 or 4 in the morning to get to holding. And if you're a minute late to check in sometimes they'll kick you out. Then we sit around in holding with sometimes hundreds of other extras. And we're usually sitting there for a good 3 or 4 hours before they start telling us to get ready to film. During this time we go through long wardrobe, hair and makeup lines where they reuse clothes. Unless you bring them yourself brushes and makeup without washing them. When we finally get to film, it's often the same mundane motions over and over. Exceptions of course, and those are always fun, then we either get shuffled around or go back to holding. Several more hours pass, we go film again. Hungry? You get lunch 6 hours after your call time, and a usually meager supply of snacks. In between takes it's more standing around, often in heat or rain or we all get shuffled into cramped spaces to wait. Days on set are often more than 12 hours, and I know someone who had to be on set for 26 hours straight. They can legally hold you there until they declared filming is done. So don't make plans for the next day. Not to mention that you rarely see yourself in the final cut. I'm not trying to bash other background actors or the film industry because I've met lots of awesome people and gotten to do some pretty cool things. For example, interacting with main actors and scenes, running around in the woods with fake guns or being a zombie. But when I did my first job as a teen, I definitely thought it would be a lot different. ETA, like others mentioned, I'm not part of the SAG union, and extras who are do indeed get treated better more perks. Also, it may be different in Hollywood, I've only worked in Georgia. I've also been a stand-in, and I like that a lot better because you're treated as the crew rather than, well, as extra. I did this a lot, it's hard but cool, but still no cash hardly in it. You can see me on screen in about 5 super mediocre movies. Still I had fun. Flight Attendant 1. You are on call, on reserve, forever, have a terrible schedule, have no life, and make no money for 5-10 years. 2. While you work for peanuts, you can't afford to use your flight benefits in any substantial way. 3. Then, when you finally get a chance to use your benefits for a trip, you have to fly standby which means you aren't guaranteed to get on the flight you want. 4. Then, if you do make it out of town you better have like a week off so you can make dang sure you're back in your base city in time for your next work shift. 5. Did I mention there is an act of US legislation, Railway Labor Act, that allows airlines to exploit so you don't get paid for certain work hours that you actually need to be working? For example, FARs don't get paid for boarding, or any time the plane is at the gate. Worst job ever. Google Street View Driver. You're all alone for 8 plus hours a day. Can almost never take a break. Need to constantly be on and focused. Lest you crash the $25,000 Subaru with $60,000 plus worth of camera equipment on it. You end up becoming an amateur meteorologist to keep track of weather patterns and cloud cover. And in my experience there are a lot of people who just get insanely upset at you. At Google, and the job in general for a wide variety of reasons. I enjoyed myself when I did it, but it was nowhere near as glamorous or fun as I or my friends and family assumed. Accountant. Everyone thinks it's all fun and number crunching. 
but the constant stream of women throwing their panties and wanting to bury your children is honestly exhausting. My mother's an accountant, from what I can tell. It's a lot of staring at large numbers and making sure they're all correct and going through vast amounts of spreadsheets. Then discovering you made a mistake somewhere on the spreadsheet that was for January. So now you have to redo January, February, March, April and May. Meanwhile, your deadline for June is in 3 hours. Being a character performer at Disney, don't get me wrong. There are some amazing perks and truly magical moments. I know I'm super lucky and tons of people would love to be in my shoes. But the day to day work is exhausting in ways I never thought possible. Guests are ridiculously abusive, I've had things said and done to me I never would have imagined. The company isn't always great, it highly depends on your leadership, and there's so much focus on your body and face, good and bad, that it can be incredibly depressing and difficult emotionally. Plus, you have to accept that there's very little upward mobility. Most people grow out of it and it's rough to know that one day you'll get too old or too fat and you will have to start all over in a new career field. So you constantly are thinking either, 1. What you're going to do when you leave, 2. How you're going to keep yourself there. I personally knew it would be temporary, and I now only work there seasonally while I have a normal career, but Disney has a way of sucking you in. A long time ago the local schools would have grad night at Disneyland. One year a group of rowdy boys decided they would beat up Mickey Mouse. Not only were they total buttholes, but Mickey Mouse was a girl that night. The school got banned from Disney for 10 years. Working in a music store, musical instruments, your days are spent listening to 50 different people play 50 different riffs poorly simultaneously, as if they're all putting on their own concert. A whole lot of Iron Man and Stairway. Being a writer, I always thought it was my absolute dream job, but the only job I could get after college was working in a content mill as a blog writer. I used to work 70 hour weeks staring at the computer in a basement of an old bank writing bulls articles about the dangers of mold, fence cleaning, and why you need a commercial awning and the dream turned into a nightmare. While I still write occasionally, I am now working as a communications person so it is a bit less heavy. My wife did some copy work for a realtor at one point. She was also excited at first because she loves writing. Turns out that job was not writing so much as it is trying to fit in specific SEO phrases as many times as possible into a paragraph without it becoming blatantly obvious that's what you're doing. Trimming weed. IDKY people think working with weed is like working in the Willy Wonka factory. It's not. You literally get to make tiny cuts with sticky scissors for 8 hours. Yay. Was gonna say cannabis dispensary. Everybody coming in you have the greatest job it's just retail. I have seen this question before and then it was the keeper at the top comment too. Nice. Anyways. There's this making a frozen 2 mini doku. Most animators work weeks for a minute of animation of one character, if not less. At one point they decided to leave out a piece that one person had solely been working on. Must be crappy to be part of the credits without being able to say this is my part. I couldn't believe it. It was even crazier to me when Sterling K. Brown recorded an entire song and it got scrapped. It's insane how much ends up on the cutting room floor for a movie to be just right. I was so psyched for the animator that did that end scene for Into the Unknown though. She killed it. Flight attendant. I did it for a year. Think you're going to have a week long layover in Paris? Guess again. You're working the red eye to Detroit. Don't get too excited yet. You're laying over in Cleveland tomorrow. Couple that with the job being boring AF. You just sit around for hours at a time on the flights, and it certainly is much less exciting than you would think it would be. Working at a Charles Dickens fair is interesting, but not incredibly fun. It is hard to stay in character, and people get so mad when they see the Alice in Wonderland area. Yeah, we know it's not Charles Dickens, but we can't have a kids play area in the world of Oliver Twist, okay? LOL the kids play area is a coal factory. Seeing all this makes me feel like I don't want to have a job, but instead live off fish. As in catching and eating, it's my favorite thing to do, not the job of a fisherman. I hear that'll make your poop very oily and stinky. <laughs> Lawyer. No it isn't like they show on TV. Hey. Finally cases before the judge. Crap the other party didn't show up. 
Next date that judge has given is 3 months away. Honest most real answer. Any job every job. Until you've done it, you only have an idealized version of it in your head. Very true. That being said it's still nicer to work in something you're at least interested in. I have a love-hate relationship with my job. Some days I really beat myself up for choosing this. But most days I'm just glad I get to do something I'm passionate about, even if it's a pain. Cyber security. Bro, the movies do us no justice. Hacking is not as fast nor is it as easy as the media makes it. It's a great field but you spend a lot of time researching or watching paint to dry, especially in the gov side. Bar bouncer. Hours of tension and boredom interrupted by moments of adrenaline fueled fear for your life. Then some butthole pukes cheap booze on your shoes. I write adult fan fiction as a side hustle. After a certain point it's just like writing a paper. Except you have to keep thinking of different synonyms for a penis. I'm missing the part where this isn't fun. Zookeeper. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome to be around so many amazing animals and care for them. But the smells are ridiculously, insanely foul. I have a really strong stomach and it's still tough for me. We've had some interns quit over it. I was warned about the smells when getting into the field. But thought oh I've volunteered at animal shelters. I know what animal stink smells like. Nope. Not even close. Airport baggage handler. Yeah it's fun being able to see parts of an airport people wouldn't normally get to see and drive around the airfield in spare time to have a look at some planes. Especially fancy private jets. But my god is it hard. Long hours. No social life because when you have days off you spend them catching lost sleep. Absolutely horrendous pay for hazardous work. In our training video they showed us the aftermath of someone who had been hit by an ATR 500 propeller and literally just smiled and said don't do this. Also what some people don't realize is that those bags don't magically appear on the plane. Some are loaded individually by hand, this is called loose load, and not into bins which is a lot easier. You could be stacking over 200 bags in a space so cramped you can't even be on your knees if you are tall. Some of the bag's cargo can weight over 30 kilograms so it is physically back breaking work and on some days you may not even get a break on a 12 hour shift and yes that happens a lot. But the absolute worst part is the bodies. When someone is being sent home to be buried we are the ones who put that coffin into the hold and tie your loved one down and it's not easy for us. My most recent coffin was that of a 2 year old baby and my god I was in tears tying that coffin down in the hold. So next time you're packing for that vacation, remember we are down there. Video game tester. You aren't spending your time playing completed fully realized games. You are playing the same level of a game over and over seeing if there are bugs. Also, you are probably not going to test the next GTA, but something like Barbie's Super Happy Funland 3, or some other game aimed for kids 8 and under, and you'll have to play it for 8-10 hours a day, every day. Managing a dog hotel, breaking up dog fights, dogs crapping in the lobby and the occasional awful owners. Teacher, summer's off, cool, week for Thanksgiving, cool, two weeks for Christmas, cool. Entitled parents, crap. School district and administration wanting you to do two different things, crap. The kids, sigh okay, I love the kids so much, but they absolutely break your heart 100% of the time. There are buttholes, sure, those aren't the ones who break your heart, it's those kids you can't help. Whether it's from a crappy home life, bullying, or they just aren't smart. It's those kids who you go above and beyond for, but at the end of the day, you can't be there for them all the time. Half of the reason kids enjoy school is teachers. Without teachers our society would truly be doomed. I've been lucky to have good teachers, for the most part, and I think that if I were put in some different classes I wouldn't have enjoyed school that much. What is an overly romanticized job? Librarian. Oh, you get to sit around and read in a nice quiet environment all day ha 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 ha. yeah, no, it's like working in a kindergarten class for psychopaths. Night at medieval times, those guys start as squies and deal with tons of grunt work and when they become knights, ours are still terrible but now you risk very serious injuries during practice or during a show. All of my friends that have worked or work there have had multiple surgeries. 
broken bones, you name it. They do like having the spotlight on them and they're like brothers but usually hate it after a while. This is a very specific post, never thought about it. For some reason some of my old co-workers got in their heads that my traveling sales job was whisking me away to exotic places and gourmet meals on the company dime. Number. No no no. Unless you think Syracuse is basically Paris and eating a poorly wrapped burrito while driving because you don't have time to stop for lunch between appointments is fine dining. Sales is not sexy. It's a lot of drinking alone and working late nights in hotels with crap internet. If you have a family it's hard on your partner because they're taking the kids several nights in a row. You'll miss a lot of you don't have to freedom to schedule around your personal life. I'm glad I got out. Saddest part for me was on the road one time going out to a solo dinner, as usual, and being sat with a candle and rose in the middle of the table. I looked around and saw every other table was a couple and only then did it hit me it was Valentine's Day. From what I understand, private investigator, bunch of boring research and chasing leads to dead ends, nothing like any TV show. It's 49.95% chasing insurance scammers with 49.95% following a cheating spouse with a 0.1% looking for a lost family member or custody case or something semi-interesting. <laughs> Chef. Lots of getting screamed at. It takes a really big person not to pass that down the line. Lots of work. Lots of expertise. Little pay. Little appreciation. Of the multiple chefs I know. All of them drink. Working at an animal shelter, everyone thinks that you get to sit around and love on animals all day, but in reality you are exposed to a lot of death and the worst of human nature, and the pay sucks because people just can't quit it because they want to help. <laughs> Chef, it's not all creativity and celebrity, it's almost entirely grunt work, danger, injury, and long hours resulting in missed time with family. I have a friend who works as a sous chef and he assured me that while he likes cooking, the long hours is going to kill him in the long run. <laughs> Film worker, hours are grilling. Production doesn't give a frick about you, good luck spending time with your kids, and most of us are addicts drunks. And the mass influx of cash followed by a dessert for any amount of time until you find the next gig. The <laughs> Veterinarian overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, extraordinarily high suicide rate. People think it hugging puppies and kittens and doing it all for the love of animals. Then get pee when they actually expect to be paid and call them heartless money grubbing pet killers when they can't afford to treat their pet. Video game testing. I had a boyfriend who did it for several years, so I know all too well that it's a horrible job. You play the same 5 minutes of game over and over again, hundreds of times, sometimes thousands. The job kinda killed his passion for gaming. And as far as I know, he still doesn't play anything for fun. I do some testing for a game as a side job. I just need to play fairly normally for a few hours every time an update is nearly ready to go out. And even that has lost its charm quite quickly. I can't imagine it would be any fun doing it full time and just testing the same small sections repeatedly. Animator. The field is unbelievably competitive and the work is more difficult and mentally draining than anyone outside the field would ever guess. Wouldn't trade it though. Don Trunet format on Trunet format and Trunet form. Frick. Humanitarian work overseas. People imagine you selflessly save starving babies. In reality it's a commute to a desk job and staring at a computer all day. Wow I had to scroll really far to find this. I do data management for non-profits. Everyone thinks it's so impressive and I must love it, but it's low pay and boring AF. All I do is attend meetings and build reports. Academia. First of all, most people undergrads call professors aren't at actual professors, by rank. And people who aren't professors are likely not getting paid a whole lot above the poverty line, have few to no benefits, have little to no input on what they teach or how. Not to mention having to put up with nonsense I've not seen or heard of in any other field. The amount of unpaid labor that goes into getting a single article published is unreal. Working in music. Most of the industry runs on contingent and part-time workers. Full-time jobs are difficult to get so if you're one of the others you're constantly chasing your next gig. During busy parts of the year you're too busy to have a life and the slower parts of the year you're broke. I worked in it for 4-5 years. It was a lot of fun though. 
Architect. Seems like lots of good rom-com boyfriends are architects. In reality, the hours are long, the stress is extremely high, and pay is really poor for a skilled profession. Fashion. Why don't you have your own brand? B. Do I look like I can afford to ship a container of shirts made in Pakistan for 3 cents to compete with some fashion conglomerate? Everything at fashion sucks. Anyone can do it with no degree. Pay is crap. Hours are crap. People are bitchy and sueless. The industry is shameless and zero conscious at sustainability. You will work and study very hard to lose a position to a model looking daughter of some rich guy. It's basically become a profession for rich girls who don't know what to do and like consuming goods. The very few people who make it, usually do it for reasons other than talent. I work at a Domino's delivering pizza and everybody acts as if it is the most embarrassing job but I love it. I basically get paid 20 bucks an hour on average. My friend works in education and she spent 30 minutes bitching to me about how freaking horrible her new job was. After she just left her last one, she said something along the lines of how on her second week she told her superior that she will quit if she is not treated right. Sounded a little like a threat. So I was like you know what if you go back to getting a job in a different field even if it is serving tables and take a break. I work a tipped position and honestly I like it a lot more than my graphic design job. And her tone was like so condescending towards the idea of it, like she felt shame at the idea of having a job similar to me. Anyways, she's the one who hates her life, not me. This is completely off topic to the thread but I'd say a job that is not romanticized that I enjoy is delivering pizza, even at age 32. M's, i.e. EMTs and paramedics, were not some heroes who save lives. Saving lives is about 10% of the job. The other 90% is dealing with a broken healthcare system, getting paid minimum wage, dealing with patients who don't need help and abuse the already broken healthcare system, and if you're lucky working for a company that doesn't give a crap about you. How has this not been said already? Video game developer. So many people want to go into video games thinking they will get to design a game. The reality is 99.9% .9 of people that work on video games get no creative input at all. That just make place test assets exactly as they are told. All the while being forced to work 60-70 hours a week in a terrible work environment. With crap pay compared to other devs. Also, so many people also want to make games. Without understanding the work that needs to be done learning first. Writer, you picture yourself at a typewriter in a cabin by a lake, crackling fire in the fireplace, a golden retriever asleep at your feet and a glass of Lagavulin in your hand dreaming up the next great American novel. Contrast that to reality where the writing jobs that actually pay the bills usually involve long nights and weekends sitting in a cube farm writing the instructions that come with a toaster that nobody will ever read while your spouse fricks her, co-workers. Oh dear, if it makes you feel better. I did read the instructions that came with my toaster. Not that it's romanticized but advertising got a bunch of spotlight when Mad Men came out and it's nothing like that. It's looking at data and managing spreadsheets and whatnot. It's heavily technical and process oriented these days. Can confirm. Was so excited to start my career at a giant media agency, until I realized media planning was literally staring at an excel sheet and making numbers go vroom. Was fired after 3 months for being terrible at my job lol. Military. It's 99% standing around waiting to hear orders from a bordering on inept superior. The paperwork is never ending. You're long periods of time away from home and will probably get divorced. Also, your knees and back will go to crap. Like my first sergeant used to tell me. Hurry up and wait. Writer or journalist. They don't show the missed deadlines. The agonizing creative process, selling out to right clickbait or the crappy wages. Not everyone can be Carrie Bradshaw. Trucking. In over 42 plus years I saw the finest warehouses in 43 states and 2 Canadian provinces. There are zero shows movies accurately showing trucking for what it is. It's a soul sucking exercise in frustration. There are positive aspects in that you can generate a decent paycheck without extensive education or advanced training. All it will cost you is your soul, your friends, your family, and your health. You son of a bee. I'm in. Animal husbandry. Animals don't know if you're helping or hurting. They peck, scratch, and bite regardless. 
And so many bad smells and disease. Oh the disease. It doesn't matter if you're not raising them for meat. I wouldn't recommend getting attached. Chances are one of their organs will just decide to fill up and they'll starve themselves to death. Throwing zookeeper in with this. No I don't swim with the gatters. Ride elephants. Pet monkeys. And nap with tortoises all day. I am a 4 year biology degree plus multiple years experience to get hired barely above minimum wage pooper scooper and water bowl washer. Bartender. Late nights. Long hours. Inclination to drink. Customer expectation for free crap. All it does is make you want a stable job. Best example of money isn't everything. The alcoholism was real when I bartended. Bartender. Doling out poison to lonely people until they reach a point where they don't hate themselves and feel comfortable participating in society. Watching others slowly and subconsciously shorten their time while numbing the pain of an unfulfilling existence. It is pretty good money in the US for unlicensed therapy. The trades. People on Reddit seem to pitch it as the only sensible career choice, but a lot of them will just destroy your body. I know a guy with a desk job who used to be an electrician. He opted to go back to school, get a business degree, and took a huge pay cut when he looked at the older guys who were electricians. Their bodies were shot. Reading this thread, I'm starting to think work in general is overly romanticized our culture, is to the point where people sacrifice their relationships, their time, and their happiness in pursuit of a misrepresentation of a career they chose. I think a lot of people feel so committed to their choices and pressured by society that once they realize that their job isn't what they expected, they just white knuckle it to retirement. Airline pilot. People think you area like Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can, swaggering through the airport, wearing sunglasses, surrounded by hot flight attendants. In reality, we're like glorified bus drivers whose job is 1% excitement and 99% absolute boredom just sitting in a cockpit waiting for life to pass by. Military pilot here. People can't wait to jump ship to the airlines because military life sucks. This post made me sad. Healthcare. Maybe not so much since the pandemic has shown a spotlight on healthcare, but being a nurse, RT, doctor, CNA, evs is hard work physically, mentally, and emotionally. I always found the sexy nurse thing funny too. I can promise you nothing I did on my shift today was sexy unless you're into poop, dead bodies and sputum. The last thing you should want to do is touch me in my scrubs. Journalist. Long hours. Weekends. Holidays. Middle of the night. Pay sucks, especially in non-profit journalism, and being so plugged into the news every day is depressing. I worked in journalism for 16 plus years, maybe I did it wrong but never once did I sleep with sources to get information nor did I ever blow some giant story wide open, and worst of all, I met zero superheroes. TV and movies lied. Mad Men did a good job romanticizing advertising as a field, and writing big creative projects in general. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of fun to be had in advertising and opportunities to swing for the fences and maybe even have a client agree to open their checkbooks and do something earth shaking. But like 90% of the time, copywriting is prescriptive stuff like just writing a dozen headline options for a website banner or in store signage, and banging your head against the desk when legal takes your clever wordplay and neuters or corporatizes it because of concerns it'll cause them some frustration as written. That's why you have to make the most of the big chances, and not take it personally when most of the job isn't those big chances. I've met a few egos along the way who get way too frustrated doing the unsexy work. Marine Corps, specifically infantry, it's very overly romanticized, commercials make it seem like all we do is run and gun, shoot and blow stuff up, but in reality you'll spend months just sitting on your butt doing nothing, and if you're one of the new guy, boots, then you'll be cleaning all day every day, mopping and sweeping. Anything that results in fame or celebrity, I dated a high profile actress for a while, it's a difficult thing to navigate, even by proxy. Oh how I'd love to hear some more details about dating her. The only stories I get are what publicists put out there, which I know is skewed. Touring professional musician. I'm not talking about the guys on top who fly in private jets and stay in 5 star hotels although it's not always easy for them, believe it or not. I'm talking most of the bands you've seen anywhere, 
It's often grueling and lots of running around catching flights, if you're lucky, or getting in the van or bus at 5. 0 a.m. after a crappy complimentary breakfast at the hotel where you shared a room with the bass player then driving all day with a break for crappy fast food and getting to the venue just in time for load-in, which you often have to do yourself. Then there's sound check and a quick dinner at another fast food chain with no time for a shower before you rush back to play the show. You put on your stage outfit, which smells like sweat. Beer and grime from the last three cities. After the set you man the merch table and talk to a few fans. Sign some CDs. Count the take and try to find Wi-Fi to catch up on emails, pay bills, etc. Speaking of bills. You count the take from merch and have almost enough for that. You hang around forever for the venue to pay you. If you've got a tour manager, he'll do a lot of this stuff for you but it's still a pain. Good news though, the hotel has laundry machines so you can either get your clothes clean or catch up on sleep. You can only choose one. Get up and do it all again. Yes, it can be fun but there is a lot of work that goes into it and it's not always glamorous. In fact it's almost never glamorous. That all sounds fun as a 18 20 something year old. As a 30 plus that sounds like heck lol. Scientist, artist, chess player, musician. It's mostly drudgery, not brilliance, eureka moments, and the pursuit of passion. As an artist, it's mostly poverty. Geologist. In school you go camping, learn cool stuff about the earth and get to have all these ideals about saving the world. In a career you manage construction workers who dislike you at best and are often a field B to collect contaminated dirt or test soil compaction on construction sites. Good luck getting a job without a very rough field component. I lucked out and work in mining, and at least get to do fairly interesting work often. But it still is a drag compared to what I thought I'd get to do and the people I went to school with are drowning in rough jobs or unemployed. Anything with work travel. It sucks. I used to go to France a lot for work. Ooh. Must be nice I'd love to go to France did you go to- Insert landmark attraction no. I went to do the same job in a different place with worse food and harder to understand people. Really surprised people aren't saying this. University professor, if you work at a non-research institution, it's not all that bad, but it's when research is expected, it becomes a slog. There is so much work to be done and so little time to do it. You're almost always working late, grading papers and exams in your own private time at home. Academia is a huge dong measuring contest. 2. Everyone is fighting to prove they're the smartest or that their intelligence is valid. It can quickly become a cesspool of narcissism. The environment is incredibly cutthroat. Even worse, any profit gained from research or whatever almost exclusively goes to publishers and administration. Professors themselves see very little of it. Doctors work long hours. They often don't really get breaks. They have a huge amount of debt to pay off from school, and the insurance they have to maintain is ridiculous. They don't make nearly as much as they should, but they still make a lot more than the average person. This goes double for nurses, but they make even less money. My brother and his wife are brainwashing their teenage son into desiring a medical career. I say brainwashing because he has absolutely no desire for it aside from they make lots of money and I try to remind them about school. Competing for openings, debt, long hours etc but they just go off what their friends of friends say about it. He will learn like we all did eventually. Pilot. The job is demanding. Airlines will abuse you and you will be thrown out at the slightest freak up medical issue. However it's a very rewarding field, despite the being away from home and being worked like a dog. If you like work, then it's a great job for you. Most pilots you see as airline pilots, cargo pilots or other commercial jobs have worked years to get to their position for seniority. That alone is a great accomplishment because it means they spend countless hours in the seat while spending more than what should be for even a college tuition. Behind the glitz and glamour of a proper uniform is a tired, overworked person who went hungry last night before bed because he arrived when all the place is closed. However he loves where he is at because he can say he did it with a good salary too. Every time I think about how far I have come, I keep bringing up that quote JFK said, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, 
one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others, too. I never really understood what he meant by it until I started working and flying more. Working to fly, fly to work. Being a famous fashion designer, there is a lot of stress to make and sell product at a pace that gets faster every year. Some of the greatest creators like Alexander McQueen had taken their own lives. Martin Margiela left due to disillusionment and depression with his brand being corporatized. He has panic attacks still as shown in his documentary in his own words even though he's stopped working for over a decade. Helmut Lang left to do fine art and sculpture. There are many examples. Second this. Even Kate Spade killed herself. Her collections were just so happy and cheerful but she was depressed from what I've read. You love your work and love to create but the business side of things are a completely different ball game. A lot of brands are popular not because of originality but because of connections. Teaching. Yeah you get summers, nights, weekends, and holidays off but it's the most frustrating, mentally and emotionally draining job I've ever had. You aren't paid enough for what you have to endure. Can't believe I had to scroll so far to find this. It's way tougher than I ever imagined it could be. Professional gambling, poker players, card counters, sports bettors, etc. I know several who make their living from this, and they led relatively boring outside lives with the same work hours as a car salesman, nights and weekends. A casino atmosphere gets old quick when you're there all the time. I work in a casino and have worked in two now to this point. Professional gamblers are few and far between and tend to be entirely unhappy and unruly. What is positive and negative about your job that no one considers while applying for it? Social media for a major sports broadcaster, bro. Get to attend a lot of cool live sporting events and be right on the sidelines. Con, your job follows you wherever you go. 24 stroke 7, because social media never stops. Also have to consistently read through some dishearteningly idiotic post comments on a daily basis. I always wondered if anybody actually had to read those. God help you. I can fly just about anywhere in the world for free. I can take months off of work and use those benefits, if I so choose. Saying, peanuts, pretzels, cookies, to the rich guy in 2A is only humiliating until I remember that I can go to the same white sand beach as him, for free and don't have to worry about my business while I'm there. Marine biologist. Positive. How many people quote Seenfield when they find out what you do? Negative. Smelling like fish and fiberglass resin. I manage the staff at several sites for a janitorial company. It's weirdly difficult to find people who want to do the job. Bro. Janitorial work is, far more often than not, Super easy, it pays comparable to retail or fast food, but encompasses a fraction of the work. Set schedules as well, instead of that randomized workweek crap you get at many entry level jobs. Con, no one respects the janitor. Granted, and like some jobs, people won't disrespect you, you're basically just invisible. You get treated like you're not even there most times, and from a social perspective most people seem to rate janitor below everything else. Massage therapist. I get to make my own hours and people are always happy to see me. I get to help people move without pain. But people can also be dongs who think that their time is more important than mine. Keep your appointments people. I work in an animation studio on a show aimed at tweens. Bro. I still cannot believe I get paid as much I do to sit around and draw all day. Con, you think watching shows aimed at 813 yos can get an aim. Self-defense instructor. Pros. Lots of physical activity. Seeing people grow a skill and confidence. A lot of fun, and a good amount of getting in touch with your primal, animal side. Unexpected con. The sheer amount of horror stories I hear from new students walking into our studio post-attack, mugging, or far too often, sexual assault or rape. It can be hard to stay professional and calmly outline our programs and classes after just hearing about someone's a stay post gang rape. I teach high school. Bro. Get to work with teens while they're figuring themselves out. 
you can meet awesome kids that allow you to keep your faith in humanity and future generations. It helps prevent that kids these days mentality because the kids today are literally the same as kids my day. You learn that a lot of their selfish stupid behavior is just because they're still figuring themselves out. Cons. You have to work with teens while they're figuring themselves out. You can meet some real shitheads and buttholes that make you want to weep for the future. You're seen as old and not cool, which, let's face it, you probably are, and therefore not worthy of respect or attention. The parents can treat you like crap and blame you for everything their kid does wrong. Paperwork. Dear God, the paperwork, the meetings, the 504 plans and accommodations. Overall, love being a teacher, 12 stroke 10 would recommend. If you can maintain the pro level love of teens and only occasionally sink into con level belief about teens. Accounting. Workload literally comes in waves. Beginning of a quarter, nothing at all. I literally browse Reddit for 8 hours and go home and continue browsing Reddit for another 8. End of a quarter, I work non-stop for 10 hours, go home, de-stress and repeat the next day. Work is going to suck this coming week. But I'm looking forward to January though. I even have movies TV shows saved so I can watch them at work in January lol. I'm a zookeeper. Negatives. There's a lot of people that believe zoos have no place in today's world. And that zookeepers are essentially prison guards who pick up crap all day and that's why you should go to college, kids. Not to mention working on holidays, low pay, and moving far away from home for a job. Positives. I get to actually make a real difference in conservation efforts. I inspire people to care more about the environment and help the species I care about so much. Not to mention the obvious working with the coolest and most amazing creatures in the world. This is a passion career. A true labor of love. Zookeepers are very passionate about their animals and would literally do anything in our power to help them. Often to the detriment of our own health and happiness. It's also completely worth it. I recently visited the zoo and was enamored by the zookeepers. You do amazing work. Animal welfare, animal husbandry, public education and so much more. I left and immediately signed up to volunteer after the zookeeper interaction. I had to be involved. That passion is infectious. You rule. Animator. Pros. Exciting project. Always meet a great caring creative people and co-workers. Cons. Pay is so dang crappy with crazy overwork. Going into your own business. Pro. Make your own hours, and nobody's looking over your shoulder. Con. If you expect it to work, you will be the toughest boss you've ever worked for. The hours at your last job were better. I worked as an RA in college. The bad is being woken up at 8am when you have no classes because someone locked themselves out and they need you to help them. Worse if you're hungover. The good? If nothing bad happens on your floor, you get paid well with minimal effort. I worship the ground you folks walk on because of all the edgy trahed freshmen you've got to put up with. You folks don't get enough recognition. Dog boarding. Bad thing is we are never closed on holidays. Never ever closed. Can't tell you how many people are pee that they had to work on a holiday. Holidays are obviously the busiest time for dog boardings. And the positive is pretty obvious. You work with dogs lol. PhD student in physics. Positive. You are embedded in a very open community with a lot of exchange of ideas. It's an interesting social setting. Negative. Your projects may or may not fail. It's often more luck than skill and negative results are worth crap. Worst thing. You are at the mercy of one single person who couldn't care less what banal technical issue is keeping your project from succeeding. Veterinarian. Pros. I get to work with animals all day long, and get to do really cool medicine I'm a GP, which means I'm also a dentist, surgeon, internist, etc. Much different than highly specialized human medicine. Cons. I get paid absolute crap. One of the lowest paying doctorates worldwide. And everyone tells me if I really loved animals I'd fix their sick pet for free. When I am already working for peanuts and my staff barely makes minimum wage. Well if you really loved animals, maybe you wouldn't take responsibility for something you can't afford. Butthole. Oh goodness. The people who get a pet and then think that the only things they have to pay for are food and the occasional toy. Um no. Yes you may have to drop $1000 on a health problem. Pros. 
Getting to play with all the animals forever and getting to help animals find their fewer homes. Cons. Not all animals can be saved. Holding a stray dog that was hit by a car in your arms as gently as you can. Telling him he is a good boy and that he doesn't need to fight anymore. Feeling him take his last breath and feeling his body go limp in your arms. Knowing that no one is going to claim his body. It's a hard job. I was invited to be an adoption counselor over the summer. I thought I had the stomach for it. After a working interview. However. I opted to take a different job. I have worked with animals for 10 plus years and have been involved in rescue my whole life. But every day in a shelter would be too much for me. Thank you for what you do. Getting to get close to cool crash scenes actually getting close to said crash scenes. It's not for everyone. And even some who thought they were cut out for it have come and gone. It's a different type of lifestyle to work in any type of emergency services. Happy holidays. I hope cool crashes equals car smashed but people are okay haha. <laughs> My dad used to be an EMT and still works saving people. Boat towing business but also responds to any call he can. And I know parts were hard for him. He is glad he has saved many lives but is sad for all the lives he was not able to save. You get to see vaginas and breasts and penises every single day. Whichever is your delight. Unfortunately they're usually from elderly men and women. I'm a nurse. Someone once accused me of being prude because I didn't feel like going to a nude beach. I just looked at him and said, if you've seen as many genitals as I have, you wouldn't want to see them out in the wild either. I'm a game developer, more accurately producer QA. Positive. I play games pretty much all day. Con, I play games all day. This is the double edged sword. When you no longer see games as fun and instead see it as numbers and bugs and spreadsheets and databases. And when you live through the 60 plus hour work weeks during crunch which can last months. I love it and I hate it. It's odd that everyone I work with makes games but only half them still play games. Nanny here. Bro. You stay active and help someone develop their feelings toward the world. After a while. It's like getting to work with your best little buddy. I've never done something so gratifying and interesting and challenging. Con. Sick all the time. People call you a babysitter, and you're not the parents. I'm not saying that in a babysnitcher kind of way, but when you work with a kid more than their parents see them and you know what kind of help they need, speech therapy, normal therapy, quality time with their parents, on and on, you can't do anything. You can make a tactful recommendation to their parents, but you can't push it or you'll just get kicked out of the life of the person you're basically full time parenting. You'll do the tutoring. Hugs when they fall, cuddles and vomit clean up and sitting in a steamy bathroom when they are sick. You do their laundry, teach them their ABCs, come when they call, watch their first steps, get hit and kicked and deal with tantrums that last so long you think you might cry too. And at the end of the day, you could be kicked out of their life without notice or rights for any reason, any at all, and then someone will call you a babysitter. Thanks for what you do, keep it up. This is why I rebalanced my life, as a dad, to take care of my girls full time. The marrow of life is in your young child's first role, steps or squawk. I now work hard very day to see they have the best I can offer. Getting the dishwasher's facial. All because the servers love to throw the silverware and make it splash. Freaking chemicals fly a lot. I thought this was going a different direction as I read it. I am a nurse. The positive is that I never have to take my work home with me. The negative is I have seen more old man junk than I ever needed to. Store merchandiser. Bro. When you get a quiet month, you basically get paid to go around and do easy maintenance on different shelf layouts. Not difficult and very relaxing. Con. You will never get a book day off in a busy holiday season like Christmas. Since you're the one that has to change over Christmas stuff over to January sales. Merchant Marines. Bro. Pretty good money. I've gotten to travel the world and see some amazing things that most people never get the chance to see. I love what I do. Con. It's Christmas and I'm in the middle of the ocean while my family is home. Unfortunately I miss a lot of things which can be hard on my family. Self-employed litter control contractor. Bro. I make really good money. Con. I pick up crap off of the ground. Some of it really gross. Military, bro, exciting jobs, and you get to travel.
Comic-Con, halfway around the world on Christmas, and I still have 4 months left before I get to meet my daughter. Pros, you get to travel. Cons, Uncle Sam is a crappy travel agent. Stay safe man. Working in a hospital. Positive, you help people get well. Negative, sometimes they don't make it out alive. Oh man, I sent 3 people across the river sticks last night. I'm about to go to bed. Strong work. Yo, strong work. <laughs> Professor, note, only 40% of my job is teaching. Positive, flexibility. Negative, flexibility. You can do what type of work you want, when you want to, how you want to. However, you never really finish the work nor know how much is enough. Very easy for the work to infiltrate all parts of your life. I'm dog bather soon to be dog groomer. Pros. Dogs. Cons. Everything else. This is not a cute play with puppies job. Some dogs make me loathe going into work. They just don't cooperate like humans do and it's exhausting. I am convinced people who say all dogs are great. It's just bad owners have never actually worked with dogs. After 10 plus years in the dog industry I can say with 100% confidence that, nope, some dogs are just buttholes. <laughs> food service for 4 years. Bro, lots of cheap and free food. I ate there all the time and spent very little on groceries my last 2 years. Con, I'm used to having food to grab during work so I get hungry and don't know how to pack a good lunch now. Bro, very little 9-5 shift work, so you avoid rush hour traffic. No boring paperwork or staring at a computer all day. Free food. Cons, you work when most people aren't. Standing all shifts and the physical work takes it all on your body. The free food is mostly deep fried and not healthy. I work security, gives me plenty of time to read play on my 3DS, and I get to take hour long walks fairly regularly. Negatives would be too much sitting, 8 hours or so in a 12 hour shift, lots of report writing, and almost never getting holidays off, especially if you're the new guard. Third shift baker at Panera, bro, lol at the customers, con, locked in store after closing can't leave till morning manager shows up. What? Working in a bakery, negatives, you will work every single holiday and every weekend. You also will deal with some less than pleasant customers. Positives, you can completely change someone's day with the products you make. It doesn't matter if it's a wedding, funeral, or birthday. Good food has the ability to make someone feel loved. I work at a steel mill in caster operations. A big positive is the amount of time you get off. Yes it's shift work and it isn't a lot of fun, but you only work half the month and I can turn 100 hours of vacation into 8 weeks off. Nobody really considers that. On the other side, the air quality in the shop is abysmal. I work next to an EF and the dust drifts to our caster, making the quality pretty crap, especially when using hot metal. I think these are two things no one really considers while applying. Archaeologist. Pros. You get to work with really cool people and are constantly learning interesting things. You get to handle old, cool things, and you will never run out of small talk and icebreakers. I ever tell you about the head in a box for example. Also the occasional mummy unwrapping. Cons, the sun damage to your skin will eventually make you look like a leather muppet. No job security, and your joints only wanna do 10 plus miles a day up and down steep hillsides and through deserts for so long. You also will go weeks without seeing your loved ones, which freaks up relationships, esp with spouses and kids. I have never met so many thrice divorced people in my life. Also the occasional mummy unwrapping, dead babies are sad, even when they are 500 years old. I work at a car parts store, nothing exciting but biggest pro is I get a sweet discount in tools and parts. I do almost all my own work on my cars. Con is putting in wipers and batteries in minus 25 F winters. Fast food worker. You'll be taught that. Particular food. Is only to be held for. X minutes. You'll learn temperature rules and quality control. Etc. Then you'll find out it's bulls. It is impossible to follow the quality control standards that corporate sets forth without getting your GM. Or yourself fired for lost profit because you threw out expired food in accordance with corporate standards. Also, if you are ever told don't void anything without asking a manager, proceed with caution. 
If you void something, you'll get your butt busted for being insubordinate. If you wait for a manager to come and help, you'll get your butt busted for making customers wait. If you come in sick because you can't afford a doctor's visit and need the money, you're in trouble for showing up sick. If you don't show up, even if you call in, you're fired for not bringing a doctor's note. Regardless of the severity of your illness, TL, DR, there's no way to win in fast food. All I've ever worked professionally is fast food. Been 11 years now, last 5 as a manager, last year and 1 stroke 2 as a general manager. Can confirm all is 100% accurate. Owner sets the real standards. I've been fortunate to work for good owners, but I know that most just make life impossible for their managers, who have no choice but to pass that impossibility on to the crew. Acute crisis psych. Pros. You can see people come out of the darkest holes of their lives to be able to smile and laugh again. You can see people who experience hallucinations find relief when their voices quiet down or go away. You get to help people and it feels great. Cons. You have to be prepared to listen to truly awful things. And you have to listen and not judge. You have to listen and not take on their burdens. And these are people from all walks of life. These are people from the top all the way down to the bottom. A lot of people burn out quick in this field. I have seen nurses and techs and social workers walk off the floor after only days. We recently had one nurse quit in the middle of her first non-orientation shift. It is really hard when we need to use float stuff or PCAs, because they can and sometimes will refuse to work with psych patients. Some people go into this field because they think they can fix people. The last con on my list is you can't help quite a lot of the people you meet. I would say at least half of the patients I work with aren't better when they leave. They are just better enough that they can start on the long road of recovery. Most people will leave the hospital and go right back into their old lives and make absolutely no changes. I copy edit a newspaper. Pros. Amazing co-workers. Journalists are fun people. I get to fix grammar and punctuation all day, which I itch to do anyway. Great in office schedule, I do have work on the brain evenings and weekends, but I can work remotely outside of 9-5. Cons, I have literally cried when the paper comes out with an errant comma. I recently started cooking again. A lot of people think it's just hot and stressful, but I get to move around all day in different ways, experience flow state, talk to pretty girls, work with beautiful fresh ingredients, give lots of people something they will truly enjoy every day, and of course learn about one of our most ancient traditions, cooking. Preschool gymnastics coach here. Positive. If you like kids, it's very rewarding. They are itty bitties, so sometimes you have to think of creative ways to explain some of the most basic stuff, like try to explain skipping. We can all do it, but can you do it such that a 3 year old understands? It is a lot more mentally vigorous than one would expect. Negative, getting pee on or bitten is a real possibility. That happened last Saturday in the same class. Also, a kid crapped herself one day and since I was spotting her, I got a little bit on me. Also temper tantrums and kids changing personalities because of lack of naps. The sweetest little girl in the world can turn into a raving lunatic heathen if she didn't get her nap that day. Bro, teenagers are surprisingly awesome when you're not a teenager. Some of these kids are brilliant. Some of these kids are not brilliant but will shock you with their dedication to helping others. I work in a really redneck area, and stereotype would lead you to believe that these guys want to bomb the heck out of everyone that's not white. Nope. They are extremely upset because they don't understand why we aren't saving more civilians in the current war. Con, I can't save them. One of my students is gay and his mother found out. He's now banned from everything. Phones. Cars. Friends. Boyfriends. Extracurricular activities. Etc. If she wins custody of him in the divorce, she plans to move him out of state. In our state you get the first two years of college free if you stay here. So he'll lose those grants plus possibly have to repeat part of his senior year. And that's one of the more positive stories. Also, while most of the students are much less prejudiced than the adults in our area, it's far more jarring when an otherwise bright kid thinks that X group doesn't deserve rights or thinks it's funny to use prejudiced slurs. I'm a university public safety officer. There's a few things people don't realize. Bro, 
I can take classes for free and will be getting my master's degree without any further student debt. Con, this job is filled with what we call no-win scenarios. In general that means you might be faced with two options in a situation where either one may or may not get you into trouble. A recent example is when I was locking up buildings for the night a few weeks ago. I had 5 buildings that were all supposed to be locked at 5pm. Obviously I can't be in 5 places at once. But here's the thing. If I start early, so they're all locked by 5, I get people complaining that buildings were closed early. If I start later, I get complaints that the buildings weren't closed on time and my department's not doing its job. And that's just one example and some are better than others. You can usually see them coming a mile away but all you can really do is make a decision. Grit your teeth and hope for the best. Middle school science teacher positive. The kids at this age are mostly capable of caring for their own bodily functions, and if they don't tie their shoes it's a fashion choice. IDK how kindergarten teachers do it. Negative. 12 year olds who are allowed to watch Deadpool, Family Guy, and South Park and never shut up about it. I've seen those things too, but I also have several other things in my brain. I think that parental ratings should be followed so that your kids teachers don't have to hear a 12 year old go jiggity ever. Just, please wait until they are old enough that they don't shout every thought that comes through their little brain. Positive. I make $50k in a low cola and can basically go a whole week only doing about 10 hours of actual work. Negative. I make $50k in a low cola and can basically go a whole week only doing about 10 hours of actual work. What's a low cola or am I just being dumb? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.